Earth what's, is very flat. What's going on? It's February 19th, Friday. What's up, everybody? I'm Brandon, host of Brandon Show. Hope everybody's doing good out there. We got a few people in the chat already. Taking back Eden. What's up? Friendly and factual Friday. We'll see. It might be. Page 42, Bill G, Enigma, Dan Morris, Ian Adams, Hell in Degenerates, Chrissy Heavey, Tony V. What's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing good. Um, uh, Let me know if my sound's okay. It looks like it's doing all right out there. And uh, let's see. What do we got going on? Let me put the link in the chat for Streamlabs so that you have that handy if you need it. And I'll pin that to the top as usual. There you go. Uh, you're welcome to join the show. Come on in Discord. The link is in the description. And uh, hang out with us. Show us something that you uh, figured out. Give us a new argument. Give a presentation. Whatever. You're more than welcome to come in and uh, talk to us. Uh, we got a couple people in the Discord. So let's go and see what's going on tonight. It is Friday night fights, question mark. So we'll see what happens. What's up guys? Hello. Yellow. No, we can't hear you. So. Hey, what's up guys? I, just, I was just in the wrong Discord saying hello. I was over. <laughs> I was listening to Jim's Discord before the show. I went over there and said hello. No one said anything. So I was like, what the fuck? I'm looking at your guys' icons. I'm like, okay. I guess nobody wants to say anything. Well, what's going on, guys? Good afternoon, Brandon. What's up, Rob? How you doing, man? And yo, yo. What up? Jeremy, what's up, man? You don't understand. You don't understand. That's your new name, huh? You don't understand. That's uh, cool. Don't understand. Uh -huh. I know. I know. I don't understand. Yeah, I gotcha. And uh, Jimbo. What's up, Jimbo? No Jimbo. Well, as usual, Friday starts with a bang. It's usually very quiet to start Friday evenings. I didn't see any big streams going, but I'm sure it'll pick up in a little while. So what's new out there? Same old bullshit, man. Yeah. Same shit. This is never going to end. You don't think so? There's nothing new Same. under the sun. Yeah, I, I believe that. I mean, if we could pull White's word test off, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's going to be a hard comeback for them to uh, find something wrong with that. You know, we do have the root numbers for uh, a single mile. The, what's yeah, that, Rob? You're a little low, but what, what do we have? Oh, yeah. Mike is horrible. Uh, we got the root hip numbers uh, for a single mile of the drop that they think is there. I don't know if yeah, it's like 7.9 7. 7. inches or something. Yeah, 0.78 and 100 meters. And then that's exponential as you get going, right? Yeah. Well, if you've got a good auto level that's accurate to the millimeter within 100 meters, you can foresight and backsight that. And if it's perfectly level, there's no curve on water in 100 meters, which you could extrapolate out to 200 meters. And if there's zero drop, there's got no curvature. Well, I agree with you. It's just a matter of how the hell you measure the, the curvature or well, lack of it. There is none. So oh, I know you that. You know how to make a stride and you get an auto level and you double check that straight water line with an auto level, you will find that there is zero deviation from straight. How do you do that over a long enough distance in order to... Um, Check it though. That's the question. I mean, it, it, we've been trying to think of a way to make a straight line for 
a long time. <laughs> but anyway. Uh yeah, I haven't heard much from Whites. I see him in the Discord every once in a while. I wonder how's it how's it going out there. If if you're out there, Whites, uh feel free to pop in and give us an update. That would be awesome. And uh, I see we've got some new photos from the Mars rover. Oh, speaking of new photos, I've got uh, the, the, the show from yesterday got taken down. So if anybody was looking for it, they took it down and blocked it worldwide because of the Olympic coverage stuff we were looking at. Bastards, the Olympic, the International Olympic Committee blocked the video. I, what, I, what were you guys I, looking at? Just like the Olympics from Beijing for like two minutes? Didn't even play the sound. What were you saying? Well, we were talking about the uh, fireworks, the footprint fireworks that they did, that they were CGI. That's all we did. So I guess oh. the, the Olympic Committee the didn't appreciate our commentary or something. Were the fireworks CGI or were they real fireworks? Uh, I'm told they were CGI by multiple people, that the, the footprints were CGI. They look real. Huh. My piss. We can hear you, but uh, you sound a little... Say, say something else, Jimbo. You sound like you're maybe... Too close or something. Talk again, Jimbo. No? Okay. Uh, looks like some new images from Perseverance were released. And I think, I'm not sure, but this is supposed to be one. Let me see here from science news. So, you know, it's true. If it has science in the name, let me bring it over and I'll share it in discord. I'll probably get blocked for this too. Uh, I wonder if I can find these new images somewhere else. So I don't get blocked. And this whole thing claims to be happening. It what? No, I was going to say, this whole thing claims to be happening in the second law of thermodynamics. Like, it's a fairy tale from the jump. We can argue about what the pictures look like, what kind of cameras it was. You know, when it, when it all comes down to it, this, this shit can't be happening, like they say. They, they think gas goes up and then turns around before it hits anything. Like, just is like, oh, I'm going to turn around now. Oh no! Yeah, I love it. I love that the the theory that they're all piled on top of each other and bouncing out, and some of them escape and some of them don't. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, like the, gas doesn't turn around unless it hits a, a wall and a physical object. Otherwise, gas just keeps going. It doesn't just be like, oh, time to turn around and just turns around. No, they get tired. You know, like I take a break. No, they no. fall back down. <laughs> Listen, you don't understand. <laughs> That's a long way to go, dude. You try going out, uh, you know, that many miles out in the atmosphere, you'd get tired too. Uh, and they're getting hotter. They claim that it's that it's what three thousand degrees or something up there. So they should all be very ready to just keep going. There'd be no reason for them to turn around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it's that hot up there and they're getting that excited, that much energy is going into them. They should all be leaving. There's no reason for any of them to stay here. Yeah, it doesn't make much sense. And there's no uh, tail created by Earth. Seems like there would be a tail if we were zipping around at like 66,000 miles an hour and spinning and doing all this shit. Then we'd have like a comet tail. Uh, because just what you said, the gas would be escaping. All right, I'm showing this new Perseverance image on uh, the screen in Discord. I think yesterday we were talking about how come we didn't get any images of the descent. So today they put out an image of the descent, the thing hanging from that copter, supposedly. 
Uh, let's see what it says. A high resolution still image is part of a video taken by several cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A camera aboard the descent stage captured this shot. A key objective for Perseverance message mission. Can't read today on Mars is astrobiology, including the si search for signs of ancient microbial life. Hold on, did you just say astrobiology? Yeah. That's an actual thing. I guess so. Yeah. Astrobiology, you know, study of life and the universe, aliens and shit. <laughs> All right. Astrobiology. I wonder if that's like a major you can get. Astrobiology. Yep. Astrobiology. Hey, there it is. Astrobiology, formerly known as exobiology. That's a cooler name is an interdisciplinary scientific field concerned with the origins, early evolution, distribution, and future of life in the universe. Astrobiology considers the question of whether extraterrestrial life exists, and if it does, how humans can detect it. So this is all the big guessing game. They're like, oh, we wonder if life exists there elsewhere. You go to this college and study this shit that they haven't even found yet? Uh, yeah, and they're talking about the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. Let's see. So I'm sure they're all into that. Yeah, but what's that got to do with biology? Well, I guess in their theory, that's how life started. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Well, I maybe know. I should it's read it. Very good. Very confusing. It says biochemistry may have begun shortly after the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago during a habitable epoch when the universe was only 10 to 17 million years old. Just a, a wee child. So they're saying life started just like floating around in space? Oh, uh, well, let's see here. Uh, according to research, very large galaxy may, may be more favorable to the creation and development of habitable planets than such smaller galaxies as the Milky Way. Uh, that didn't answer your question, but that's what it said next. I immediately regret going down this rabbit hole with you. Where, where were we before this? <laughs> the Perseverance <laughs> picture of it dropping to, uh, to Mars. Uh, after looking at that CGI yesterday, I'm looking at this and I'm going, how do I know this isn't CGI? I'm trying a new microphone, supposed to work on Mars. Is it coming through? Yeah, actually, you sound all right. Well, great. That means we went to Mars, and we've got, like, helicopters and satellites orbiting and rovers. This, this mic is working. Okay, cool. Confirmed. Makes sense? Yep. Makes total sense. Uh, Adding to the... High fives, everyone. High fives. High five. Adding to the excitement was a high-resolution image taken that during the rover's landing when NASA's Mars Curiosity rover sent back a stop-motion movie of its descent. Stop-motion movie. Oh, man. Yep, here we go. Here, here's to me getting blocked. Yeah, I think we're at them. Yeah, you know how hard it is to get one damn nice photograph? And, and, you know, you go down to the beach, you try to get some shots for Flat Earth or whatever, you have to really struggle. I don't care where you are with a camera. It's work to get a good shot. But these people can have robots in space hurling through and descending to, to, to the surface and, and capture home movies of it. Really, eh? They're, they're, they're so wonderful. What talent. Well, they sent them back from Mars, so it's pretty impressive, right? I think we're at the point now. Is my mic low? No, 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 go ahead. I got my fake AirPods in today. I think we're at the point now to where you're not going to be able to tell if it's a manipulated image or not. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, you're just going to have to believe them and trust them that they are in this in this place. Is it just me or are you very low, Jeremy? <laughs> he was a little low. I said no, he wasn't, but you are. Literally, low. I trained to fucking hear, and then you know, others is so loud, your ears bleed. It's just fucking nonsense. 
Is my mic low? I got my fake AirPods in. That's better. It's a little low. Hey, right. I can hear you all right. You might be having some other issues oh. on your end, Jimbo. But yeah, it is a little low. Uh, that was it. Hold on, how do I sound now? Am I louder now? No, not really. Am I louder now? No. How about now? Nope. This is it? This is what they got excited about? Are you guys watching this? No. We couldn't couldn't hear you very well there. What is there to get excited about here? Oh, I see. It's falling. There it is, right there. Oh yeah. Wow. That's uh something there. Okay, so everybody was excited about that stop-motion movie, I guess. Unlike with past rovers, the majority of Perseverance's cameras capture images in color. After landing, two of the cameras captured views from the front and the rear. We looked at those yesterday of uh, the Martian dirt, supposedly. Perseverance got a close-up from NASA's Eye in the Sky as well. What are they talking about there? Uh, yeah, so exciting stuff. A primary objective for Perseverance's mission on Mars is astrobiology research. There it is again. Including the search for signs of ancient microbial life. The rover will characterize the planet's geology and past climate and be the first mission to collect a cache and cache Martian rocks and regolith. I don't think I've ever heard that word before, regolith. Am I louder now? Say something again. Mic check, how do I sound? You are a little louder now, yeah. I switched, I got two pairs of fake AirPods. This is the better one, obviously. Okay, sorry to interrupt. No problem. Yeah, regolith is that magic reflective dirt from the moon. Why we can see the moon so bright, that magic regolith. That has a name? Okay. Mirror rock, yeah. Regolith Magic mirror rock. Is a blanket of unconsolidated, loose, heterogeneous, heterogeneous, superficial deposits covering solid rock. It includes dust, broken rocks, and other related material and is present on Earth, the Moon, Mars, some asteroids, and other planets and moons. Pretty much anywhere Mar NASA goes that they need to uh, show us images of the surface. There's regolith, I guess. I've never found any Earth regolith and never been pointed out to me a regolith on Earth. Excuse me. Sorry about that. I'd like oh, to Earth see is, some one day. Earth is where you find moon rocks at. You didn't know that? Uh, That's how we know the moon rocks are from the moon because we get some on Earth and we say, oh, they're the same. I think they're just talking about here dirt and rocks that are on top of bedrock, pretty much, because they have a picture of alluvial gravels in Alaska, and that's regolith. You probably have some regolith. Well, in your alluvial means it came from above. That means it came it from above. Deposited from the air. Oh. Yep, alluvial flow. It doesn't say that here, though. Uh, let's see here. Regolith on Earth originates from weathering and biological processes. If it contains a significant proportion of biological compounds, it is more conventionally referred to as soil. People also call various types of earthly regolith by such names as dirt, dust, gravel, sand, and mud. So I definitely have some regolith outside my house. I guess it means we're walking on the moon. Yep. I used to smoke regolith weed when I was a kid. <laughs> it does sound like a good that name for a strain. Of that dirt weed. <laughs> yeah, Stonehenge, Stonehenge has a big regolith there. It's the shit you got to cut up with the scissors, the Mexican compact stuff. 
Oh, it's half half of it. If you buy an ounce, you get a half ounce of seeds and stems, yeah. You gotta check the bag, make sure there's not just a bunch of shake and seeds. Yeah. I gotcha. Uh, I, too, was a teenager in the 90s. Uh, yeah, it was all that brown shit you get from the 80 bucks an ounce. Freaking Mexican <laughs> dirt weed or California red hair. Take your choice. Yeah. I don't I don't smoke these days. It makes me paranoid. Oh, you gotta smoke a little it, bit it, once in a while, open your mind up. The weed can get to like twenty four, twenty five percent easy THCs and it is an overdose level for most people if you're pretty amateur to, you know, weed consumption and stuff. Way yeah, back it was seven to ten percent. Ten percent was a lot in the day. What you do is you go get a vape pen, it's like ninety percent THC nowadays. Holy crap. That's there. Yeah, you yeah. can't get higher than a vape pen. No, well, the I'll volcano pass. can get you higher technically, but you pass out often too on the volcano. You know, it really pisses me off because when I was a teenager, I was like, they should legalize. I can't wait till it's legal and you can go in a store and buy it. And now it's legal and you, there's stores where I live and I couldn't give a shit less. Oh, you can you order know? online double and triple A stock for 50 and $60 an ounce today. And it's shipped no problem through Canada Post or whatever. Event it's dirt cheap now. If you shop around, you get freaking incredible prices on the shit. Wow, no joke. You know, if you're paying more than eighty an ounce, you're paying too much for triple A and sometimes four A. So, oh, it's more expensive here. I'm in Michigan. It's way more expensive. It seems like. Yeah, near me, it's in uh, Verm- in uh, Massachusetts wild expensive too they're charging like 40 50 dollars for an eighth of some bubonic chronic but still it's expensive yeah that's what it is like here we too, just and they got, all got a, a fancy name and little fancy bags and shit that it comes in yeah. we got too many producers here in the markets basically saturated you know there's never and too both many legal and you know sort of off-market producers and they're all top quality shit so And I'm just as glad that there's competition against the government regulated crap. You guys got government weed out there? Lots of government weed. It's all controlled prices, you know, but uh, uh, sell a limited supply too from Tweed and from, you know, our elite, you know, who rule. At least some of these other operations, it's just regular Joes like, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry. And I really believe in small and medium enterprise. So just saying, you know, the government, when it wants a monopoly, well, it just makes something illegal, like sports gambling, alcohol, you name it, uh, this stuff, the weed. And then when it finally says, well, we've got everything in place, let's monopolize it. So now the government wants to control the weed and make taxes off of every gram sold. Well, that's unfair. Because for decades, they would give you a criminal record, prevent you from traveling and all kinds of shit, getting good jobs, because you had a gram of fucking weed in your possession. I say fuck them. Unless they want to give amnesty to everyone in the past who they've oppressed because of the fucking weed, fuck them. They don't deserve to collect taxes on it. I don't know what to say. I've been oppressed. Good rant. I like that, Jimbo. Uh, My my brother-in-law got caught with a fucking roach before it was legal in his uh, cigarette pack just a little roach and it cost him thousands of dollars he was on probation forever had to take piss tests had to hire a lawyer all this shit it was ridiculous oh my god for, for a roach that's horrible yeah for a fucking roach like almost ruined his well, life. during the prohibition, hundreds of drivers died, machine gunned by police, blockades, and other stuff. You know, now the government controls booze through liquor boards. You know, sports gambling, numbers rackets. You know, they used to go in, machine gun people, and numbers bureaus and stuff because it was illegal to bet on sports. And now it's all government controlled through the lotteries. It's funny. Things are illegal till the government decides they can make money off it and monopolize it. And that's how it goes. Yeah. Sorry. 
So oh, yeah, I mean, that, they could show NASA could show us any pictures from outer space, and uh, you know, people are just gonna jump on and be like, "Oh wow, that's amazing, we're on Mars," and you know, not even question to think if it's real. And the people that do question it, you know, they make them look like kooks. Well, how about when they say there are planets like that oh, have marijuana only marijuana growing on it? What would be the biological purpose of that? Where are the photos of it? And you know, not only when can I go, but you know. <laughs> what, what bullshit, you know? They, they got the greed great. for everyone out there, this envy thing. One planet, it, it, it rains diamonds. Another one, you know, if you stuck a straw out into space, you could suck in alcohol. What the fuck, yeah, you know? Fun. All these stories. It's all nonsense. It's anyway, they keep, right? they keep yeah. them coming. Yeah, they keep them coming thicker line. and thicker. Yeah, they you got some pretty good storytellers, man. It's good work if you can get it. I said, and then well, we deny that horizontal is a straight line. It has infinite curvature, Rob. You don't understand. Yeah, dude. They had Robert W. Service, the most northern Freemason, and they had uh, Admiral Byrd, the most southern Freemason. What a coincidence. And both are, are, are storytellers, <laughs> artists, writers. What a coincidence, eh? Uh, yes. How come so many of these Freemasons are creative storytellers and rocketeers and storytellers of being to space and on ISSs and to the moon? Hmm. Freemasons, eh? Storytelling, eh? Artistry, eh? Creative storytelling, eh? Hey, Jimbo, I think you so glossed over something there. I think Rob. I think Rob, do you Canada. not know that a straight line has infinite curvature that it, it's not a straight line it's an infinitely curving line then it's not straight no it's infinitely curving dude, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh yesterday man that was funny oh my gosh that's so crazy imagine trying to define something in your head like that it's yeah. not it's not straight it's infinitely what, what was it infinitely small or infinitely little curvature i can't remember the exact term he used yeah his his argument is basically he almost has to say that because when we were talking about a ray constantly steering and changing direction he's he just has to say well no anything that changes direction is infinitely curving you know so like they have to make the extreme case seem like the every every case kind of thing so it's an unfortunate position that rumpus is in yeah no i get it then he shows his fish tank with the laser going through it and it, it's yeah. a sugar water fish tank so he's got a, a gradient right with it's yeah. a fish tank with a flat bottom mind you um <laughs> <laughs> so that's he's extrapolated out into his little diagram with rays going in every single which way so there is absolutely no optical observation that could falsify that model. That's just like saying uh, light can go in every single direction. It can bend however it needs to bend. Like, okay. I get yep. it. It doesn't make sense. That diagram that he keeps pulling up, if you flatten that, you know, it's not like the light would change because that would be a new great uh, density or new... Um channel that is going through it's not like the light would stop behaving in those ways and so we have infinite reach as well on a flat plane <laughs> it's, it's arbitrary if you just allow rays to do whatever they want so yeah exactly we'll just apply it to our model and then, then they go to oh but the conditions don't exist uh for it to work yeah, on exactly. a flat plane right. yeah okay. right, right sure 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 showing us a flat layered strata sugar water it doesn't make sense dude it's like he's supporting our position that 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 uh sugar water thing is probably one of the best supports for objects disappearing bottom up on a flat plane i agree it shows how how the rays attenuate and don't make it if you're looking level on the other side so exactly extrapolate that out and it's going to terminate at the bottom somewhere so if you're far enough away exactly exactly it's yeah. not going to make It'll, it to you right yeah, they'll shoot into the water, or they just, they won't have the strength, you know, they don't have that path to the observer. Yeah, exactly. 
it's bad, dude. It was funny though, Brandon. Yesterday when he started going back to like, uh, you know, boats disappearing over the horizon, I just thought that was kind of a, a victory because like he kind of went full circle and just said, "Well, yeah, we know that it's curved because boats go over the horizon." I'm like, really? <laughs> this is where we're at now. <laughs> yeah, so. it's like, why are we even <laughs> talking then? I mean, we're gonna go back to the very first thing that we ever discussed, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh man, yeah, it's just too much sometimes. Uh, Chris Berry says, uh, did you know that a curve is infinitely straight? I did not know that. It makes sense, though. Curve is straight. <laughs> straight is curve. Just a matter of how you yeah. define it. Yeah, I mean, we could say we could say a curve is created by an infinite number of straight lines, you know, which is also true. It's like if you go into the limit, you can make a lot of statements mathematically. But that doesn't mean that that's reality. That doesn't mean that in reality that there's a medium that allows anything to ch constantly change direction. That's crazy. You yeah. know, like there's there's no way, you know, that that array, it wouldn't it would be difficult to even create something like that artificially, much less expect it to happen in real life. That's ridiculous. That's why, generally speaking, it, it makes sense why rays would travel in a straight line unless they're highly motivated to change direction but they're not going to keep changing direction you know infinitely that's for sure so he was catching uh, he was saying me i didn't understand what he's talking about the infinity doesn't really mean what he's talking about but there's no way that he can get around it if you have um whether you call it theoretical infinite refraction or whatever that means what that means in real life is a change in direction so their assumption is that there is an atmosphere that exists out there that allows that to happen. I just, that's ridiculous. I don't know how we can even defend that at this point. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, you know, it's, it seems to me that it's very consistent when people go out and do these laser tests. And I don't know, maybe we only see the results of the ones where they end up seeing the laser. That is possible that there's some uh, bias there. But the laser <laughs> and the mirror tests, uh, it seems to be very consistent that people see them across large spans. I mean, I can go out and yeah. find a dozen of them right now. And now I, I am supposed to believe, based on his diagrams, that no, I'm not seeing that straight ahead of me. It's Lasers don't bend, light don't bend like this dumbass is claiming. It's a delusion that he has. He's, <laughs> I don't know what kind of solvent or fumes he takes, this guy, but he's a clown. And, and I, light don't bend that way. I'm so sorry. He needs to know that. And we don't even need to converse about it. It's just preposterous. Yeah. It's um, a bad time to be a baller. The, I can post, anyone can get these 50-mile laser pens. They're incredible. They cost 20 and $30, not thousands of dollars. Everyone who wants one could have one for a few bucks, you cheap cunts. But anyway, you know, if you want to listen to people who say, oh, you need a content cater and $1,000 and a megawatt fucking laser and blah, 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 and a lake in fucking North Pole, go to fucking hell. All this bullshit. But just the lasers, they hit the target 12 miles away. I got a beam that's so sharp, and I have pictures of it. It's fucking incredible. But this bullshit, lasers bending around the curve over the fucking water bullshit. You tell them to get off the fucking pot or have a shit because it's over. Fucking nonsense. Ain't worth discussing. And that cheap cunt, too. He can go out, get himself a couple of fucking 50-mile laser pointers for fucking nothing. And, and fucking, you know, take some pictures of his fucking curving laser. Make his fucking bend around a lake or some fucking thing. Or I don't think I could have said pot. it better myself. That's correct. Just get a water level. Like I say, these projecting flashlights I talk about, the through night TN42, that son of a bitch, you can Morse code someone 20 fucking miles away. And I'm buying a new one so I can do that with someone. Morse code them at six miles across a lake or 20 fucking miles with no fucking bendy light either. So you want a cheap fucking experiment, you know, that's one cheap test. 25, 20 mile Morse code across a fucking bay. And I guarantee you on a clear night, every night it'll fucking work. Cause there ain't no fucking curve. 
But Jimbo, imagine if light did do that, how impossible it would be to like really predict anything. That would just be crazy, dude. Like if light did actually curve around a ball. It don't. Get a few of these flashlights going, these throwers, and the bitch is done. How the fuck could you target yeah. anything with op- optically? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. It would be like, well, I don't know. Well, we have to measure every point between what I'm observing and me and then get an understanding of what impact that has. You know, we, we cannot assume that something is roughly, generally speaking, where we see it, plus or minus some amount of whatever that he was citing yesterday. Yeah, like uh, the one laser test that we always look at on here, there's 220 feet of drop. So let's say you were trying to target that. Are you telling me that you'd have to... You couldn't do it visually because if you aimed uh, at w- what you were seeing, you'd be off by 220 yeah. feet? Is, is that what right. they're trying to tell us? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, yeah, I just can't buy that, man. I think that's the big difference between the ballers and the flat earthers is, is they bought into all this mathematics and the model itself. And yeah. I can't get the past the fa- pa- past the fact that uh, I can't detect any movement. I can't find any curvature. And I see the sun go across the sky every day. I, I, the Everything in my whole life that I've experienced tells me that I'm on a, a stationary flat plane. Now, we can talk about the the flat part, uh, but the stationary part, I just... You have to yeah. suspend so much disbelief and buy into these mathematical models. And if their mathematics works and they can do stuff with it, they can use it for whatever they... I haven't heard many practical examples of why the Earth being a ball matters to them, but if they can actually do stuff and calculate things with it, the position of stars wherever, and it helps them to think of the Earth like a ball because of the mathematics, that's how they present themselves. Yeah. Go ahead. It's fine. Just don't go around saying that we live on a fucking ball. Yeah. I mean, the people that I talk to who are actually doing this stuff, like I worked as a seismic engineer and my friend who's does uh, drill uh, tools for downhole like lateral they don't they don't account for it you know and like we did in a, a seismic and then you talk to pilots and they're like no like they just they've never thought about it the, the few that I've talked to and so those are people that would be able to claim that you know and tell us with long explanations yeah this is where it's calculated this is the math this is the precise yada 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 it's like these are non negligible distances that people are traversing um, so yeah, they're, what they have is they have a story for how things fall to the ground. Fair enough. That's why I was trying to give Rumpus that. Just say, okay, we can, we'll let you talk about that if you want, if well, you accept the flatness and the station. E- even from boots on the ground information, everyone knows and has heard of South Carolina. Carolina. Well, there they have this thing where from the foothills to the coast, there's one foot of incline per mile. So about 60 feet over 60 miles. And each foot of elevation, as you descend, has a different ecology. Now, if that's 60 feet over 60 miles, where's the curve? Because there should be a few thousand feet of curve in that 60 miles. Yeah, yeah. I, I so haven't got it. How can it be one foot of, of descent per mile over 60 miles? It'd be so easy to prove if we were doing all those things. Like, it would be simple. Like, rigorous. That's what I think, too. We wouldn't have to try so hard to find, uh, you know, the curvature. It wouldn't be near impossible for us to come up with some kind of experiment to uh, detect it if it were a real thing. Right. And then they would want to listen to every idea because it's every way that's rigorous will show that it's curved. They wouldn't keep trying to hide the op- it in the, in the optics and the atmosphere and these bendy rays, which is absurd. So, Well, that's why I get that impression a lot is when we talk about these different experiments that they, they don't really want us to do it. They don't, yeah, exactly. they, they don't want us to try to uh, falsify. I do get that impression. And I don't know if that's just because they think it's a waste of time. Yeah, but, um, more often than well, not. Well, they that... bullshit because when they say these these instruments like a theodolite or an auto level measure curve, they don't. They don't even measure in degree uh, radians. They they measure in uh, gradients. It's a different, you know, numbering system. And they don't measure curve. They measure a slope or a grade, a little hill. They cannot measure curve. So even these instruments, they misrepresent them and 
their math and everything, trying to force them to measure curvature when none of them do and apply, you know, 360 degree arc radian math to where it don't belong. Hey, uh, my do? God, let me ask They're you a insane. question. Oh, sorry, I yeah. thought you were done, Jimbo. Uh, what do you okay. think is going on with the angles to the stars, the sight angles to the stars? So you've seen the falsification that they put forward for uh, sight angles to Polaris on a flat Earth. You know what I'm talking about? I can bring up a picture. No. All right. No. Yeah, visual might help. Yeah, let me let me bring up a visual real quick. Whenever they go to the sky, I just lose interest because it's just it's not equipment that I don't think most people have. Brandon, you would have to know the size or distance, which we cannot get. Yeah. Okay, this is, I should be sharing my screen if you see a, a little Muppet thing on there in Discord. No, I'm not sharing. Hold on. Yeah, leave it. Well, how do they justify the, the angles when you do uh, train tracks? You know what I mean? If you were to do this angle thing with train tracks. Train tracks are measured by grades, too. They, they, the, the track is sloped to get up uh, mountains. It can never go over a few degrees. No, I was just Train talking about the like fact that it, that it appears to co go uh, converge. You know what I mean? Oh, the train tracks parallel. Yeah, they're parallel. But if you did this angle thing with them, wouldn't wouldn't you get like a non-parallel angle since they, they come to a point at the end? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, I I know what you're saying, uh, Jeremy. That's kind of along the lines of what I was asking Mind to God about. I was just trying to get your opinion on, have you ever seen this debunk before where they'll place Polaris at, say, 5,000 kilometers and they'll say, well, on a flat Earth, yeah, uh, Polaris would have to be in multiple locations in order uh, for the observed angles on Earth to work. And mm -hmm. then they say, uh, if you were at the equator, it would still be at 26.7 degrees in the sky. This is something we've argued a lot about. Uh, Jeez. It, here's here's uh one from w b uh w s not w b s w s where he, they they show it there is b s but i hear what you're saying yeah yeah so my contention <laughs> is that okay yes trigonometry works on a, a, a small scale i understand that but you're, you're taking and you're applying this straight geometry this trigonometry to these celestial objects that as uh, Rob pointed out, we don't know where, what they are. We don't know where they are. And who says that you can use that for sight-based angles, perspective-based <laughs> angles for objects that are that distance as they move mm -hmm. across the Earth? Who says that you, know, you can just use straight trigonometry and uh, get that based on those sight angles you're getting? Yeah, I mean, the fact that they're literally reaching for something like that proves that they, you know, they're not interested in coming up with something that is actually rigorous. Because, I mean, going to something that they say is that far away is really ridiculous. You know, I think that just just what they're the kind of tests, quote unquote, tests they're looking at, even the, the sticks in the ground is evidence of the fact that they're hiding what's really going on. So, like, that really doesn't make any sense. You know, it's like. If, if science is about, you know, establishing tight cause and effect coupling, you wouldn't go to a point that introduces an absurd number of variables and leads to non-unique solutions. So, Well, this is very much related like to that. their sticks in the ground, too. Sticks in the ground, yeah. sun angles. It's all related to this same principle. That when you look at... Yeah, exactly. You know, that on a flat plane, you could... You could uh, calculate the position of the celestial objects using trigonometry. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you could do that. Now, I understand that it's just trigonometry. I'm not trying to say trigonometry doesn't work. I'm saying yeah. that their application of the trigonometry to these uh, observations uh, it works doesn't enough have any to get experimental... ships anywhere they want. You know, the 345 triangulation with the stars above 15 degrees above the horizon. It works. 
So the math they do for it, whether it's 100% accurate or not, it does the job. See, you know, for navigation, they set the sun at 3,200 miles up, 32 nautical miles across. And they do their math based on that. Well, it works for tangible things, uh, you know, that we know we can touch and we know how it's working and shit. But when you start going in outer space, you know, this shit just might not be working like you think it is. Like, I like to go with the reflection. It gives us a lot of answers from Eratosthenes, uh, Polaris on a flat earth. You know, the reflection would... Uh, Do you put your mic in another room, my friend? You went to, no, you know, really low again, and people strain to hear you, or at least I am. Wasn't that low? Shit. Well, uh, Brandon, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll probably call a surveying firm here in Houston just because it's been on my mind, and not that I'll necessarily do this, but I think from these discussions all these years or whatever, I think the only thing people would agree on is using GPS, and we basically, they may even have the data already. We don't even have to get them to do a survey, a special one, but... They need to just give us GPS points along a straight line and then GPS points on a water body. And then we plot those. And then that'll, that'll, that's it. Like they can't argue with that because it's using their own technology. I'm not against all these other things, but I think it looks like, you know, building something or forcing the line or lasers, there's too much uncertainty and, um, you know, it's too subjective. I, I think, again, I don't think that that's, I think drones might be the only other option, but. I think that that's the only way to get a unique solution that they'd be comfortable with. So I'm going to, I'm just curious. I'm going to call them, not tell them that it's a flat earth thing, but just see how much that would cost for them to do it. So what do you, what do you yeah, think about having them do? Uh, mind of God. Basically they would just give us GPS points along a known straight line that they've surveyed for maybe, I don't know, like designing something, or maybe they just have these, uh, these things in their uh, database, you know, of just stuff that they've surveyed and mapped. And so, if they give us GPS points along a straight line that they everybody they know is actually straight, you know, and all that, and then they go and use that same device on a body of water with sufficient um, breadth, then we plot, plot those two. And then that will show us um, what the shape of the water is using GPS. Uh, am I good now? Yeah, I think so. I think that's uh, the only way to do it. The USGS yeah. might have good data for that, yeah. for oh. LIDAR and elevation maps, yeah. topo maps, the whole works all free normally. Yeah, I think that's the data is already they there. Do is collect data like that. The only thing that's unique about this is they would give us data along a straight line that they could tell us this is where it is. So you, we could actually go to it. And Can't we just buy a, G a little GPS line. unit and... Uh... Go we'll make a straight line ourselves or not? Yeah, we could. I think the only reason I would engage an engineering firm is just so that they don't say that we manipulated it or anything. We just say, I, like... I, I would do LIDAR over GPS or and, uh, you know, uh, surveying any day. More accurate. Wait, is that LIDAR, a technique to get Wow, is LIDAR beautiful. Well, whatever they use, actually, it doesn't have to be GPS. It's, it's fundamentally anything that they uh, coordinate that they can provide it doesn't have i don't know if it's gps whatever they want to use um but it just has to give us you know positions of those points along that line and then go use that same system in water and then you know if they get a substantial enough uh breadth along the water there will be no um you know no doubt what it is and then you plot those two on any um arbitrary axes uh, it takes the axis. It takes the way that those coordinates uh, that are produced out of it. It's not. It's not relevant. We're only comparing them one to another. So, if that straight line is plotted alongside the the points on the water body, and um, you know they both turn out to be flat, then we know it's flat. And then if they plot the if you plot the data, and then that curve, that straight line is curved, and then the water body is also curved, then we know that we also know that it's flat. So you're starting off with your baseline is something that is known to be straight. Yeah. Okay. Via GPS. Not exactly. Not level that's, that's straight, what we're, right? That's what we're, Lower level and straight, possibly. It doesn't actually have to be. Uh, I don't know if it actually even has to be straight in terms of like parallel to the water body. It just has to be a straight line that we could visually discern whether it's been curved or not. So as long as we plot it and it's straight then we can trust what that other thing is 
like the water, that's what that is. So if the if we plot the straight line as straight, whether it's pointing up or sideways or, or at 45, it doesn't matter. As long as it's straight, then we look at whatever the water body is, that's what the shape of the earth is. And so it's like, a, it's basically a, a reference. It's a basis. And so it's kind of the same with all these other tests, you know, like a laser test. We're using a straight laser as a reference to dictate what's beneath it, the water, right? So in this case, the only thing that's unique is that it's we have the data points along that straight line with GPS coordinates. And then that same device they, they use to generate that, they could just go and they have to go in, in the water and give us those. I would suspect something like this probably wouldn't cost that much money. I, I don't know, though. Like, cause like, if we had the skills, we could do it ourselves, but, um, or the time. But um, it's not, we're not talking about that many data points to do it. Um, Kosho's been talking about doing something similar to that. I, I don't know the exact details of his, but I don't know if you're interested in Is somebody. he a baller? Yeah, he's a baller, yeah. He's in Texas, too, okay. I think, isn't he? Yeah, I think I've, I think we've spoken. I think I think something like that is the only way, and then not doing it by Jesse Kozlowski. It's it's actually getting not just. And then the nice thing about this test is we would get multiple engineering firms to try it around the world and just say, don't tell them what it's for. Just say, I want data along a three mile straight line, and I want data, um, you know, over a whatever five mile, uh, five square mile water body, and then just send that to me in an Excel file, and then we plot it. And then everybody plots it. And then <laughs> that's what the shape of the earth is. So, Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to understand where you're getting your baseline from, though. You have to have something that you know is straight to compare it against, right? Or I guess something. Yeah, it, is, it doesn't have to be physical. It just has to be straight. So, like, they would, I'm assuming they would do it piecewise. Like, they would do, like, in segments, because I guess their tools can probably make absolute straight for whatever x number of meters or something and so every point along that path they would just have to go for a couple miles and so it doesn't actually have to be physical points you know but we just have to know that every point that they're giving us along that reference from beginning to end is straight okay and so i'm assuming i'm assuming that's simple for them because they would do that to make lots of different things you know like whatever they do so, you know, they'll do it piecewise. That will be one file that they'll give us along that three, four mile straight line. And then they'll use that same device, put it in a boat, and then literally just, I mean, read out the data, literally just turn the thing on and then drive everywhere. You know, just make as many loop de loops as you want and, and go everywhere. And then there'll be some amount of noise because the boat's going to be going up and down. But, uh, you know, if they collect enough, it'll. It'll average out. And you just plot the two. Well, I'd be curious to see the uh, results of that. Um, yeah, I'll call. Like, we had some bad weather here, but I'll just call a couple surveying firms and just see how much it costs. Like, I mean, if we're talking, like, lots and lots or, you know, something like that, it may need more resources. But if it's, like, a couple... And before we do that... Before we do that, I would go just buy a little cheap GPS device. No, I mean, how much are they? I've looked. We could do it. The only issue is not the one on the boat because that's the easier one. It's the it's making sure that that line is actually straight according to like professional engineers. But well, yeah, how much is a cheap GPS device? We could probably check it before we spend a ton of money on a professional engineer, right? Well, the nice thing about this is that all the high end ones you can rent, and I've looked into that. You can rent those, and they're not. It's not that expensive. You can rent them for a day, and it's like a few hundred bucks. So it's that's not. What I mean, we can mark them out with stakes. You know, you get a you get a height, you mark it out with a stake, you go twenty feet down the line, you mark it out with another stake, no? Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. I think we, we probably do have the ability to do it. I don't personally, but yeah, I don't think it would be that hard either to like learn how to use it to get the straight line too. Yep. I mean I think GPS is gonna show a globe. No, it won't. It's gonna show <laughs> what GPS is designed to do. It's gonna it's gonna be the most unbiased way. It's we're not understand that straight line is straight so that's our reference we're not we're not even gps has nothing to do with this all gps is all we're relying on gps to do is to be able to uh, tell us where a point is in three-dimensional space and then honor something relative to it that's it that's and we know that that's accurate because it's working every day 
on our phones and everywhere, obviously. So it has nothing to do with the coordinate system. It has nothing to do really even with GPS. What they would do, this is what I'm thinking, is take those coordinates and they'd wrap it around their model. So if you measured something straight, then yeah. it, and they wanted to show it in their model, they would show you a curved line over the surface. Yeah, that's true. But the nice thing about this, I agree, all we do is we just take both data points and we just plot it. Okay. You know, we don't set up an axis. You just literally plot it. And then we just ask them to give it to us in X, Y, Z and not in polar because I'm assuming they can spit it out in different um, coordinate systems. That straight line is the judge and the jury. So if that straight line, you plot it and it's straight and then you plot the other data and it's flat, then it's flat. That's, you can't, there's nothing to argue. It's, it's just what it well, is. It's like, Stanley's bridge was me measured with the GPS coordinate system and showed a drop. But they didn't give us a straight line reference. If they, if they did that, say, use that same device, went on that bridge, let's say the bridge honors the curve beneath it, and then they gave us also a straight line reference that we all know is dead straight for like whatever, maybe the same length as the bridge. If they give us both of those and we plot it, that would give us a unique solution. That's gonna, then it takes the grid out of it. I think that's going to be the tough part is laying out that straight reference. Because think about how yeah. these guys are going to think if they're, if they're thinking in the globe uh, model. First of all, you're going to have to get past this. I mean, you might find the right person. The whole idea that uh, they're holding two ideas in their head at the same time, that level is straight, but straight is curved. You know, that whole loop that they get yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be, well, I mean, you have to make different. sure they understand it's got to be fucking straight from point eight to be not level straight. I think Rumpus agreed with it last time we talked. He just, he's just kind of what you were saying earlier. He knows that that will produce a unique solution. So they don't, they don't want it, you know? And so, you know, like if we, if not just one engineering firm, but if we got like 10 around the world, let's say it costs two grand to do that from beginning to end. And we got 10 people to do it. I mean, like <laughs> the, the engineering firm is not going to say that it's flat because they're not going to, they're not going to want any, any part of the conclusion. But if they're, they're going to have to say that, yeah, that other 2D data set we gave you, that's what it is. You know, they're not going to like, they'll be able to say like, yeah, that's, yeah, it's flat. It's, you know, like there's nothing to argue, I would say at this point. Yeah, just give us the if, data. If you don't, we don't even need to know your name. You can, you know, you could even sign in exactly. some kind of NDA or something that you wouldn't name the, the firm if they got fishy about it. I don't, exactly. see, I don't see why they have a problem giving you data sets, though. Yeah, exactly. And for them, it's money. I mean, they're, they're going to make money. They're, they don't need to know what we're doing that for. They probably get a lot of um, surveying requests from companies and individuals and all that kind of stuff, maybe trying to build something or build something elaborate. So I bet I you could, you could find worry. somebody to do it. Uh, you know, somebody did something like that. I can't remember who it was. They called up and yeah. they talked to a surveyor. I think it was Chemo. And uh, okay. what happened was he had this conversation. He Now, he did put out a video where he kind of edited it, and he, he put his own interpretation over the guy's words. But th one of the ballers then, a lot of the ballers interpreted that as deceptive uh, because hmm. the person wasn't told that uh, they were talking to a flat earther and talking about the shape of the earth. And then when they put it out, they, right. they called. I saw the, that video. You, you remember that? They called. Yeah, I do. I don't know if it was chemo, but it was some clever person who called a surveying firm and then he kind of got them to say what we all know. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, exactly. You're right. It wasn't chemo that made the call. He was the one who put out a video afterwards, I think. He found the footage and then put out another video. Yeah. Yeah. So. so the nice thing about this, Brandon, is we just, we, they forward the email to us with the two Excel files. We just, we just forward it. You know, we don't manipulate it. You know, we don't like, it's, it's an email. So like, we can't go and like change the files. So we just forward it to people yeah. and just plot it. That's what it is. It's two data sets. And then for me personally, that would be rigorous. Like, I don't think obviously a few people here, we don't need it at this point, but that's something that I don't think the ballers could argue with because you know, it's technology that is like, then you'd have to be like, well, GPS is like not working or something. And like GPS I, is incredibly accurate. I feel like it'd be easier to just get a GPS machine, get 20 stakes from Home Depot and a hammer, go to a beach and just start nailing the stakes and wherever the GPS says we got a straight line. 
yeah if somebody knows how to do that and they're here for sure for example i would i'd be interested even if it's just learning how to do it but yeah that would be because the straight line is the most is going to be the most contentious it's not the the gps in the water because i mean you i mean just go go you can okay, end, you what happens if this gps thing comes back and it shows a curve you're you're a driver after that why do you need a done. GPS for that? Why can't you just use an auto level? Why do you need the G- GPS to to whack right. stakes in the ground, Jeremy? We don't need the GPS. Level. We don't. This is my idea, GPS. man. So hold on a second. So if it comes back, we put the stakes down. We get the GPS. We got our straight line, and it comes back that, and in, in fact, yes, the water is curving. Uh, you're going to be a global after that. Yeah, it's curved. Then the water's curved. Like here, here's what I would. Here's what would happen <laughs> if it's curved. Here's what would happen is that straight line. We'd plot it. If that uh, straight line is plotted as straight and then the water curves then it's curved because it's honoring the straightness and it's honoring the curved as well so in that case then it, yeah the earth is curved however if that straight line is plotted as curved and then that earth is curved then we know that the earth is flat because it's taking a straight line and curving it and so we would have to then look at how much it curved it so it would be a little bit subjective but let's say that we can plot them in a coordinate system that's reasonable and then yeah, if the straight line is straight and then the water's curved, then the earth is curved. And you're a clover after that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I the water it. curves then. But it's, we, we, like, it's ridiculous. It's not going to. I mean, we know that, we know that that's insane. But um, that, this, this is, it's, it's like almost, uh, it's unarguable. You know, it's, it's yeah. what it is. It's so the, you think yeah. the global positioning satellite system that, that say they, they say they have satellites orbiting a spherical earth, you think that's going to come back and give you the data to show that it's flat? That's not how GPS works, man. Like that's not that's not where they're getting. This they data. don't claim it's satellites orbit going or all around a spherical Earth. Well, no, that's that's what they're going to claim. But what what we know is that yeah. if you move your phone around and if you use the high end stuff, you can get a coordinate for your phone in a coordinate system very accurately. We know that. Like even if you just lose your iPhone, you know that it has some ability to find your phone. So that's not, it's not, there's no debate on both sides that this uh, thing, this broad system that's in place, global positioning, whatever you want to call it, ground positioning exists and it's accurate. And it's like, if you pay enough, it's sensitive. So that's, that's all we're exploiting. Don't go down that path of like satellites and all that. Just look at the, look at the math. Look what we're assuming. You have a, a point like whether you called it stick in the ground and then you get the coordinate at the top. If you move that unit up or down, like let's say because it's a good unit, uh, only a little bit, then uh, it doesn't change. And then you'd have to, even if you move it a little bit, it will change. Like that's how sensitive that these good ones are. Then we know we have a good unit. And then let's say you do that and then collect those points along a straight line. All we're hoping for or relying on is that that system is accurate. And then if we go the next day, and take that unit to that same post, we're going to get the same number. And then if we move it up a little bit, it will give us a different number. And then that's what we want. And then if we go to the next stake, the next day, it's going to give us the same number. And that's what GPS is good at. So yeah, however it gets it, whether it gets with satellites or whether it gets with airplanes uh, or whether it gets with towers or Rumpus does it himself, it. he's AI, <laughs> we don't care. As long as you go to that point and it honors that distance, so if you go but to the, the lab, is, you, that distance with a new number. The thing is, you have to just trust these people that they're going to make a straight line for you. Yeah, we can do it ourselves. I like the ambition. I just don't know how hard that is. Maybe it doesn't. I don't think it's that hard. But you know, I'd rather an engineering firm just do it and then send us the two files. You have to just. Tr- I, have, I know, but I'm saying you have to just trust that this is a straight line. No, we'd see it though. But yeah, we would. But then if we do it, we don't just trust one test. Let's say like five, te- let's say five engineering firms, different firms do it. Then, I mean, I wouldn't argue after five. And they're all using GPS. And they're all using GPS. That's yeah, what I'm saying. You have, to just trust that, you have to just trust that these, these, they're, giving, they're giving you the right data to make a straight line. I'm, I'm assuming, I would have to assume that they're really good at making a straight line and then honoring the points along it with a device. I would assume that that's easy. Uh, so, I don't know for a fact. Sasha says, uh, Super Chat's $2. She says, build your own GPS. They can't screw with the results. That's her suggestion. <laughs> no. Or his. Thanks, Sasha. Is that that, like, 10-year-old kid? I, I, Hello, I'm new. I don't know. I, I don't think uh, I've seen Sasha in here before. 
I just remember years ago talking to somebody and I'm like, why are you here? And I thought it was like, end up being like a 10 year old or something. Like, why are you here on these debates? Like talking to us. But anyway, as far as I know, we've never had uh, any, anybody underage on the show. As far as I know. Except I have a quote. I have a quote I'd like to share with you that debunk every single long distance observation being over the curve, being stuff hidden on the curve. Okay. I'm all here. I'm a flatterer today. I'm a flatterer today. Well, welcome back. Jose. So this so this quote and I quote, you can't distinguish between earth's curve and refraction. The rumpus 2021. <laughs> we got some good rumpus quotes. Hey Jeremy, yep. there's another one for your list there. This, these guys don't I know, right? These guys don't even know what refraction is. I, I took another look at the black swan argument and these guys don't even I, I don't I don't even think you know what looming is. And if you would like to hear the quote of the horse's mouth, I just posted the four seconds clip on the general chat for you. We so we know Jose, your hiding curve and refraction, dude. We know that, Jose. We're just Jose, kinda... today do you tr- Jose, today do you trust the guys that sent the Mars rover up there? Earth is flat. Earth is flat. Space is fake. The, the that that was all bunks. The Mars mission. Nothing exists. I'm a flat Earther today. Boom. Welcome. Hey, speaking of the Mars rover. Don't get too fucking excited. It'll be a Glover tomorrow. Sorry, I say. <laughs> Flip flop. That's why. No, no problem. But that's cool. You guys hear the? Yeah, I'll play this one time for you guys. Hopefully, you can pick that up. No, I'd like to hear it. The sound on Mars? Yeah, you didn't know they have a microphone on the rover? What? They said back sound? <laughs> oh, yeah, you yeah, posted it on uh, General, Brandon. The sound of the rover moving? <laughs> no, no, the, what it sounds like on Mars, bro. I shit so you not. SE, SE, the rover's hard of hearing. It has a hearing aid kind of thing. I wouldn't mind. Which way to make sound? <laughs> it has a the microphone. The, the dirt? I'm sure uh, Brandon can play it. Uh, yeah, I can play it, but you guys won't be able to hear it. I'll play for the audience. Wait, where is it? Sounds of Mars. Mars. Okay. Uh, the planet itself is making the sound? All right, let's hear it. Yeah, let's say you were on standing on Mars, right? What would you hear? Well, if you ever wondered, you don't have to wonder anymore. Hmm. It's just like a buzzing noise. Wow. Um, that's like, that's what it's supposed to sound like on Mars, huh? Yeah, not supposed to. That's what it sounds like. Uh, well, according to their uh, rover, their fantasy rover, that is supposedly their quote unquote. Why does it say r- r- rover fluid pump? Is that, is it picking up the p- not- noise from the pump? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, if there's nothing moving on Mars, what's there to make sound? I don't understand how this is not the sound of the Mars rover. Yeah, they're picking up their own sound. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't forget what, there's wind is there. Make there sound? Is it wind? Yeah, yeah, there's there's dust devils. You guys must remember from the previous... Uh, <laughs> previous but all I remember why you guys... Why you guys why well, you guys even attempting to, to talk about the details? It's just fake uh, of the of the gate because space is fake and the loss of thermodynamic dictates that the, you yeah, cannot yeah, live yeah. you cannot live Earth's atmosphere where, where the air we breathe. There's nothing up there. So why are we even trying to talk about the details? We enjoy, well, we enjoy laughing yeah, about it. it, just, okay. yeah, it doesn't just go up and turn around for no reason. It's got to hit a, a wall or a, an object or something. We like to laugh about it, Jose. Some of it's very ridiculous. Yeah, why, are, why are you raining? Gas, up doesn't rain, do, gas doesn't just get tired and say, oh, time to turn around. It's but imagine, gas. guys, how many people here on Earth, you know, have said, gee, I wonder what it sounds like on Mars. Well, <laughs> now they don't have to wonder anymore. No, literally no one has ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Guarantee you, NASA's gonna make like a song with that as the beat. You know, like they're just gonna make it into just a clown show. So we'll, we'll wait. It sounds, it sounds like a baller argument. Same thing.
Yeah, it's comical. Uh, did you guys know they have this uh, laser on this thing on the on the rover? They gonna do a laser test for curvature of Mars? No, 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 no. Check this out. They have this uh, laser. It shoots a laser. It blasts whatever it is they're testing, and they read it. Like the robot from Short Circuit. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. I kid you not. There's no science for the globe. Flat Earth has all the science. Thank you. Test, science tests and demonstrations. That's right. You don't even need to invoke science. It's just obvious, dude. There's no cause or effect of what we see. So, like, science is like... There, no, top. all the science is some Flat Earth. Ask Jeremy. But science is not even necessary yeah, yeah, yeah. to establish what we're seeing. It's just what we're seeing. The, the Flat Earthers have all the science tests and demonstrations. You know that. I trust you, Jeremy. I don't know any any science no, for the global flat earth, but I trust you. I trust that you. Should, you should, should not person. trust me. That's how we got into this predicament in the first place. You should not trust me. You should not trust the. I market. had to trust people. I had to trust people. No, you don't. You don't have to trust people, Jose. You should not trust people. Lie. We know this. Okay, I believe you. Is that better? No, don't stop. Stop <laughs> believing me. Don't. Believe, you should not believe me. Sound check, sound check. Let me know. I if have you faith in you, Jeremy. You're issues. telling the truth. You shouldn't. Just believe that the building that you're in is not spinning violently. Just believe that and then you're good here. Relax. No, I don't have to believe that. What I believe okay. is Jeremy tells me there's science of flat earth and he showed me laser tests and and little cartoon drawings of uh, buildings and then you open a door. And you got this disappearance from the bottom up. I believe it. That's flat earth science. That's right not here. science, dude. That's <laughs> science. Science produces technology. And then we use technology to do different things. And so, yeah. I've literally technology. never shown you a laser test or a cartoon of anything. Technology no, but if, you, if, I got, if I got drawing, if I got a little Lego, a little toy of boats, and I put it near a door, and I open that door with different temperature, and I see it getting disappeared from the bottom up. That's flat earth science, isn't it? It's just an observation. That would be a, dem a demonstration or a test of how, of how things could disappear without having a physical uh, obstruction in between them. So what can I say if somebody say, present me any flat earth science? What can I say about flat earth science? What can, what can I like say? That's water, water, one thing. Water, you tell them, Jose. We have relativity. And objects will always disappear bottom up across any surface. Height gives viewing preference. That's obvious. That's a, that's a scientific optical fact. So you and Rumpus and other people who deny that are reality deniers. So there's no point in talking to you about I, other I'm a flat earther, bro. I'm a flat earther. I believe okay, all, the then, is in, all the science is in the flat earth side. No, and that's been established by a great channel called Life is Short. Best <laughs> channel ever to tell you how things disappear from the bottom up. Shout out to Life is Short. It's hours and big, hours of information. It's just a big chink in your armor. And we know that once that's possible, even if we're not even saying it happens all the time, but once that that's possible, then it uh, calls into question all of those um, bottom up things you guys bring up. So uh, I had to take a phone call. Where, where were we? We, we, we just resolved time. it. We, we resolved the entire wow. thing while you were on the phone, actually. Oh, it's over? Yep. The whole debate's over? Yep. Yeah, thank you for your insights, Jeremy. It was great. I appreciate it. The Earth is a globe, Jeremy. You missed it, bro. It's you over. It. We lost. We lost. Yeah. yeah, we lost. There's no winners or losers. Somebody. <laughs> so... Only I want to go earthers. to my safe room now. I feel threatened. I want to go to my safe room. <laughs> There's no winners or losers. Only flat earthers. Thank you. You know what I've been thinking about a lot is maybe we're focusing on the wrong thing and we really should be focusing on going as far into Antarctica or to the North Pole as we can. Uh, I know we've talked Tomorrow. about it before, but it just doesn't seem like it would be that hard to take a trip to the uh, North Pole, at least. I know the South Pole is restricted, but... 
Yeah, the North Pole would probably be, I don't want to say easy, but compared to Antarctica, I feel like the North Pole would be like easy peasy. Maybe the Flyotas can send a rover to Antarctica. Oh Maybe my God, that's Carlos snake. Pagan. Carlos, you I were bowler. Shut up, Carlos, shut up! I have an idea. <laughs> if we find a high enough pole, Carlos can climb it. He's good at that. And he can give us the layout of the land. Then we can start the expedition. Hey, I, won't come, I won't climb a pole for less than $100. Okay. Oh, come Deal. on. You <laughs> know. Come on. We'll make Rumpus's ancestors are a bunch of orangutans, so they're probably comfy up there. So, like, we'll send we'll them. We'll make a rain singles on you like you're on a stripper pole. Come on. Look, Shira, you're probably hairier than me, so shut up. No, I said rumpus, not you. I know that you oh, you don't okay. believe in that. that. Right. No. Oh, I, th I was about to say, I like shoot, you ain't got nothing to say. Yeah, Brandon, don't, don't I'll try to I'll try to calm down, you... Brandon. I'm not gonna troll too hard. I didn't you do my show can... today because you were on. I didn't want to overlap today, so you got it. But I'll I'll try to stay quiet. I'll try. To no, stay quiet. no, you're fine, Jose. Keep, it's I'll, all good. I'll keep it in the down low. <laughs> we had two hours of rumpus last oh, night, so you're uh you're you're all good, man. That was exciting. Hey, I'd <laughs> rather see Jose and and and. Mr. Uh, our buddy there, then Rumpus any day of the week. Oh, yeah. What buddy? Yeah. He just sucks all the oxygen out of the room, doesn't he? <laughs> no Marlo, offense, Rumpus. To Travis, right. the two Travises, Travis from Life is Short and Travis Plain Truth, we know that they're smarter than Rumpus, and Rumpus is just, he just can't deal with that. You know, he's just I don't know. sad. I wouldn't say they're smarter. They're probably just as smart. I would. Carlos can also Maybe disappear bottom up across a flat surface, given given well, certain conditions. If there's if, if there's some refraction or some uh, atmospheric conditions, probably. Okay, good. Well, that's wait, good. That's Carlos, progress. Carlos, wait. So you're watching something in the distance, and it appears to be disappeared. Half of the bottom of that building is disappeared. How can you determine if that is refraction or Earth's curvature? You can't. Yeah, exactly. You cannot. Yeah. Correct. That's right. That's why I don't rely on observations over water or long distances because of the atmospherics see that's yeah. why it's easier to talk to you guys well, you but i seen bowlers carlos i seen bowlers presenting boats missing the bottom part and buildings well, disappearing you? bottom up as evidence for yeah. the globe why what do you rely on carlos i don't know that's them no you said you don't rely on the, the boats the long distance that what do you rely on yeah he's asking you why I are you a baller on... what's your strongest Stance. I'm. I'm. I'm Lights in the sky. People. What do you rely on, Carlos? Science. Wait, well, okay. Right, what what proof do we have that the uh, that the rover landed on Mars? That's, that's right Let's on start with that. Kind of you got? Images, and then just you know, you just gonna have to trust the. Uh, the long range observations. What images? I don't know if Jeremy's talking to us or Jeremy's talking in the other room with somebody else. I'm not sure. I'm yeah, your mic is bad, bro. Yeah, sorry, guys. My mic's bad? Am I good now? You're better now. A little bit better, yeah. Okay, so what images, Carlos? I thought you said science, now you said images. Mm, yeah, that too. I said so far the images, and I guess you have to trust the guys who work on the uh, radio communications to believe them that they're actually coming from images. where they're coming from. Images of what? Of what they sent. What what images exactly? Oh Lord. Did you see the new perseverance and image, uh, Carlos? I should have it on my screen right no, now. No, just the one just the one from yesterday that we talked about. I haven't seen anything else. Remember we were talking about uh, the descent images? How come we didn't get any uh, video of the descent? Well they did put out today an image of the descent, but unfortunately we have no way to tell if it's CGI or real. Oh yeah, sucks. Right, that's the problem. Carlos, yeah, you're talking. It's, it's you're talking happens. about Carlos, really quick. You're talking about images that are presented to you, sent from a medium that does not exist, that any of us have been or will ever be. Just because you have been, I haven't been. Doesn't doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I'll say. Jose's getting the hang of it though. It's good. Good. Good for him. It's because he's a double agent. Right, Jose? <laughs> Hi, I'm a flat earther. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, I got a couple of super chats. Let me read them. Mikey Smith horizontally <laughs> perverted. Uh, Glober <laughs> Globers need to learn how to critically think. 299. Thank you very much, Mikey Smith. C4, five bucks. 
What's up, C4? Jeremy, I'm still waiting on those citations for can't have gas pressure without a container. Why you gotta make a brother wait like that? Smiley face, tongue out face. Care to respond, there's Jeremy? So C4 is calling you yeah, up. Yeah, that's There's so many places where they say gas fills the volume of his container. You gas pressure is the force of the uh, the gas the pressure exerted on the walls of the container. Like it's it's out there. There's millions of them. Go Google it. NASA even says gas fills the volume of the containers, and gas pressure is the force exerted on the walls of its container by the gas. Yeah, the definition of pressure itself. Like Globers, Globers are the only idiots that don't know you need a container. Yeah, the definition of pressure itself proves that it has to be on a surface. So I don't understand why they even go there. The you cannot the measure, container. you cannot do any measurement of pressure if you do not have a container. That's it, period. No, but take even, take even one step lower than that. A surface. Don't worry about the container. Just worry about the definition, right? Pressure is like I'm not talking about walls. Surface. I'm talking a container. Yeah, if it's just a surface, will be the container. Still a container. So we have pressure. It's contained. No. Exactly. That's, that's, but I'm just saying, like, the definition of pressure itself. Definition there we go. I got one. Let me read it off real quick. I'll post it in the chat, too, for C4. You ready? Go for it. Pressure is a force exerted by the substance per unit area on another substance. The pressure of a gas is the force that the gas exerts on the walls of its container. That's from chemistry Elmhurst uh, dot edu. Yeah. Okay, you can check yeah. with NASA. You know you love NASA. You can check with them. Any everywhere it tells you this. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask you something to follow up with that. Uh, so, if if you have a container. That let's say is thirty feet high, and uh, you know it has a probably a radius of let's say 20, uh, three feet, uh, and then uh, you pressurize it. it, it the pressure is going to be higher at the to, uh, at the bottom compared to the top. Why is that? If it's supposed to spread out evenly, of a single yeah, gas, yeah. of a single gas. Hold on a second. Uh -huh. Did you do this or are you just guessing? He's just making it up. No. <laughs> I've done it. That's how barometers work. But anyway, yeah, I've done it too. Spell barometer. So you made it. You've made it. Hold on a second, mind. You've made you've made a container pressurized with one gas in it. Yeah, that's just just air. So not not one gas, multiple gases. But even even with one with 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 uh, let's say uh, hydrogen. The, Did the you do this thing or are you just guessing? No, that, that's, I'm, just, I'm asking you. That's what happens. So you have higher pressure at the bottom than you're going to have at the top. Why is that? Did you do this? <laughs> yes, I've done it. In you, your you, head you, or in real life? You filled the container with nothing but hydrogen. And, and any gas. Have you done this? Yes, I've done it with air. <laughs> What the fuck? Have you done it with a single gas? So only Carlos. with only with when one more, one more gas, you think that's gonna be possible? I'm asking you. I mean, you should be aware of this if you're gonna be in both you law of thermodynamics. You should be. Right, what, are you aware asking? Of that what are you asking? I'm asking why is it that the pressure is always gonna be higher at the bottom of a container that compared to the top? Carlos, you don't know what you're talking about. Go on mute. Por yeah, favor, senor. Did you have the temperature all the same in this container? Let's see the video. Let's just let's skip the games oh, and the questions. Well, let's see the video. The video. Okay. He's just joking, I, man. He's not, he's not saying anything. Yeah, let's that see what requires a response, dude. Let's see what you did. Let's see, Rag. The man how, how do the Romeros work? Let's Spell see what you And then I'll explain it. B A R O. These nuts? I don't know. Okay, um, that's good enough. All right, next. <laughs> God. S seriously, Carlos, you're, that, you're still going to be my special guest tomorrow, right? You got time? Yes, yes, definitely. Oh, but cool. but listen, so so barometers work, uh, uh, for example, on a drone, by okay. letting you know how high, how low you are by you know the different uh, change of pressure. Uh, the, the higher you go, the less pressure there is, right? 
Is that how it does so, it? You, yeah. So, okay. so, we, so in this whole call container that we live in, we have higher pressure at the bottom than compared to the top. So yeah, we know you can put pressure top, gradient in a container. We know this. We already know this. This is that we know. What's your point? Yeah, okay. So, so, so why is that? If, why if do we? Have, why can we have to the pressure second gradient in a container? Supposed to, supposed to even you know just the equalize the pressure is supposed to equalize. How come we end up with higher pressure at the bottom of our container compared to the top? So I'm your point is because we have a pressure gradient in a container, that's your proof that there's no container? No, I would, no, I'm, I'm asking you, why is that? I'm asking you a question. I say, why is so that? So you've conceded, you've conceded that we must have a container to have gas pressure. Yeah, then we're good, Carlos. No, we don't no. have any issues. I'm asking no, you, you haven't conceded why why is it, talking why about is a gradient. It, why is it? Why? Talking about a I'm asking. I'm asking. Why is it that when you pressurize a container, the pressure is going to be higher at the bottom compared to the top? So you can see that we have a container. Then we'll move on to gas pressure gradients. Yeah, Carlos. No, all, we're asking, not Carlos. One second. We're not trying to give you a hard time. We're just trying. No, once again, we're trying to meet you. This is my question. Why we're trying to, to meet you halfway. Words in my mouth. No, this is my question again. Why okay. is it that when you have a gas in a container, the pressure okay. is higher at the bottom compared to the top? So you can see that there is, in fact, a I'm container. Why is it that when you have gas in a container, the pressure is higher at the bottom compared to the top? One gas or many gases? You're talking about delta X. When we, you've got to have the X, you can't have the X without the container. So you're trying to skip past that and move on no, to delta no, X. No, just, if you're you scared of answering the question, the then, fair enough, we can move on. See, there's a container. Demonstrate that, that one gas, like a homogeneous... Um, he can't do it. He can't do it. Container has has a gradient. You know, gradient. If, if, it, if it requires, if it requires a demonstration, I will. Oh, excuse you. If it requires a demonstration, then I will do that and come back and ask ask the question again. How about that? But you're going to show one. No, gas, that, that, you're, you're, you're trying to put. Up. Go ahead, what Mike, is it, guys? Go what do you guys want from me then? No, I'm just asking. How are you going to make one gas one to container have a gradient? I don't understand. Uh, I didn't say, like, who, who said there was a gradient? No, I thought you were saying that, why is there layers? You just said that there's going to be layers, no, right? I said, why, I said, why is the pressure higher at the bottom compared to the top? That's true, that's a gradient, you're, man. You're skipping past the fact that you're talking about delta X when you haven't gotten past X yet. You can see that there, are, you do need a, do you can see that we need a container to have gas pressure? I can, I can see that all you got is the word salad of the antecedent being a container. That's what I, that's what I can concede. Well, what do you mean? Uh, well, we're not getting I mean, anywhere. NASA knows you need a container to have gas pressure. NASA Jeez, knows Carlos, this. Man. Volume of the container. Carlos, you can't have one gas in a container creating a gradient. I don't understand. Jeez. What's the bias in the container? Why would, it, why would it have a really? gradient? So, 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 so <laughs> that's a good question. So, let, let, let's, let's, let's say that I, I, I do have one, one gas and I do uh, achieve to have a higher pressure at the bottom compared to the top. Why do yeah, you think that would, that would be, be strange? Be? I don't know. That, that would, would be strange. strange. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Why? Why would it have a bias? Why would some cluster in different spots? It would just. It would. It would go well, uniformly across the whole uh, volume. Carlos, do you believe that gas moves randomly and freely in all directions? It has to. All directions. Do you believe that gas moves randomly in all directions? Yeah. No, I won't say randomly. No. Yeah, it is random. <laughs> all right. Go ahead, mine. Take care. When of it's not <laughs> when it's not contained, it's not random, Carlos. When it's when it's not contained, it might be a little random, but still, you ha it has to be contained because anything under or under pressure more than one psi, which is kind of the the center level, it, it, it has to be contained. Of, uh, oh, you know, that's mandatory. You have to contain it in order to make okay. pressure. Once Don't you take contain. the container out, it will go all over the place. <laughs> it's random because it can go in any direction and it will go in every yeah, direction. It's not random. It is. Spell random. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> do you have any better questions? <laughs> What do you think of our GPS test? Would you accept that and then stop lying to everybody if we did that and proved it to you? I'm not. Well, you first you calling me a liar. I'm not going to say lie uh, that I'm a liar. No, I'm saying if what? Uh, if if we prove it. Well, uh, which test are you referring to? I'm not aware of which which one you're I'm talking gonna about. I'm going to call a surveying firm, probably one in 
Texas just to maybe I can go and see them face to face. But like I'll call them and say, can you produce, give us GPS along a straight line. Also give us that same GPS data over a water body and send those two to me and everybody in an Excel file. If we plotted those, would that be enough to prove the surface of the earth in a yeah, I unique, well, uniquely? I would, I would ask what, <clears throat> how they're going to achieve to make a straight structure first. first and then yeah, that's fine. Structure. That's fine. And I, and I, I think that's going to be the most contentious. But this, I'm talking about an engineering firm. Let's just say that they have ways to incrementally make sure it's perfectly straight. Let's say you got comfort that not only that it's straight, that's one issue, but that the GPS at those points are unique. You know, that's why we need so a sensitive high-end device. Are you, are you asking me if I would accept the results that would show that it's a flat earth? Or no, like whatever the result is. If we plot those no, two. I, I, no. Well, if I we would, plot I those would two, say, you would, would know, right? Well, I would say, okay, if, if it says uh, shows a, a heliocentric model, I'd be like, well, okay, well, this goes, uh, this agrees with a bunch of other uh, things that have been done. If it says it's a flat earth, I'd say, great, good start. Let's go from there and keep keep testing it. Okay, good. Yeah, that's perfect. I would I wouldn't take the first baby steps, either. Carlos. Baby steps. If, if it was flat, I wouldn't say that it's flat based on one. That's uh, that could be, um, you know, the firm maybe making a mistake or something. Like so yeah, good good point. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, and if it was look, if look, it was man. curved, I'm all, if it was I'm curved, all about. Huh? Let's just say let's just say it was curved. Yeah, we yeah we probably want maybe three or four, and then that's then it's that's it for me. I mean, I don't know how many more you would need. Well, like I said, to me, it would be like, if it shows curve, I said, well, okay, disagree with the, with the, most of the stuff that we've been talking about yeah. or whatever. But if, if, if it's right. ocean, I said, well, great, we'll go from there and keep moving further and, and, and pushing it. So, Yeah, try a different water body, maybe a different engineering firm, they'll different GPS exactly. unit. Yeah, I mean, but... Repeatable. So, there you go. I, I tell you, man, that, that's a, such a hard thing that everything, every all these tests is like having to use some uh having to find a way to make a straight structure it's just like yeah yeah it's, agreed it's, it's such a this is the best way this subject. is the best way because it's digital and it's using an incredibly reliable and precise system that already exists well, and I say, no to you to you but other people will say somebody can fudge the numbers and go back to square one but you know no, i mean oh, this, yeah, is this, is, firm. this is total bullshit absolutely yeah yeah, see, yes, like I said, Carlos, not everybody's Carlos. intelligent with you, the man of God. I'm Carlos, just saying, well, address that the elephant in the, elephant in the room, bro. Address the elephant in the room, Carlos. There's no science that can be done to prove the shape of the earth. Go ahead. Yeah, all we can do is, uh, you know, show multiple things that agree with each other and say, well, this is the best thing we get. Mm -hmm. Science is Why not... for so many years I heard people like Rumpus saying the body of Science when science cannot be done to prove the shape of the earth and it's they say no, the earth the, is a globe for the shape you don't need you don't need it because it's just a, it's a measurement you don't need quote unquote science we're, we're making measurements so that's a result of good exactly science. exactly and they, then they glow the bowlers like carlos carlos go mute <laughs> <laughs> what the heck jose we're gonna have to start paying jose on brandon's show then the ball is like Carlos and Rumpus say, the body of science says the earth is a globe. No, no, it doesn't. Science, it does a verification fallacy. Science doesn't speak. And no science can be done to prove the shape of the earth. Period. It's not necessary. That's a fact. Jose eats not... chihuahuas. Well, Brandon, I'm space is fake. I'm space that. is fake. Just, just saying. Space is real, just not where you dummies are going. Space Mars is fake. Earth. Uranus or wherever you guys are going. Ain't nobody going to Uranus. It's probably next. If well, you say space, space is real, anything about the new rover in Mars, anything that space agencies tells you, all you have is a, is a belief and faith on them people. That's all. Carlos, why are these None of us money can do it. Looking, looking for life over there when people's lives are suffering here? How do you, uh, how do you explain I, that? That's that. That's a good. It is they. They have their vision in the wrong place. I had I a call. Uh, yeah, I agree. That seems a little kind of moronic when we have other things that could be perhaps productive. But it seems that way. I've heard plenty of uh, reasons why it's, it's a good thing and how it can help advance other things. But yeah, it seems kind of kind of. But dumb do you read the comments below? 
Do you read the huh? comments below these uh, NASA videos? A lot of people are making that statement, not just us flat earthers. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm aware of it. I say that okay. too. I say, okay. I say, why can't we just come up uh, and put all the all these smart people and uh, make devices that can clean water uh, and have clean water for everybody and elect electricity? You know, I exactly. agree. It's like. I agree a hundred percent, but you know, I don't know. I don't know enough about it to to say whether they're wrong or or right. But it's right. a good it's it's a good question to ask. Hashtag default right. rumpus. Default. Right, and I'll post another picture. <laughs> right, and I'll post another picture in chat. Put this one up on screen. This is straight from NASA. Picture let's see. Yeah, straight from NASA. Yeah, the picture of Mars with Bernie Sanders on it. That's the one he posted. It's a pressure. It's a four exceeded by substance per unit. No, that's not it. No, nah, no. Nah. I put another one up. I put another one up in the chat. Put it in the chat. Oh, yeah, that one's just from an edge you say. This one's straight from NASA. I see. I see what gases do. Yeah, see what gases do. Hang on. Where, which chat? The general chat? Yep. General chat. Straight out of NASA. Phases of matter. How do you work this? <laughs> Phases of matter. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What about it? Oh, do you see the gas one in particular? The one we probably be most concerned with what about it do you see how it takes the shape of a container why wouldn't it and the volume of the container because yep. you said it would make a gradient that's why sure. no it's sure. you need a fucking container is the point it takes the shape of the container and fills the volume of the container yeah okay yeah focus on the word container yes what about yes. it? What do you mean, what that's about it? That's, that's all you got. The antecedent for pressure is container. And uh, you're just reading that somehow. Somehow you're pulling that out of all that. But okay. All the evidence what? concludes to that. Gas fills the volume right? of the container. So what's the volume of the... I'm, I mean, you're trying to skip over the, the container part and just go straight to the gradient part. Which is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Any demonstration done yeah, on but, Earth leads to that conclusion, Carlos. Yeah, but but if you have look, listen. So if you have a container with just one gas, and then you have a gradient, you have higher pressure at the bottom compared to the top. Why why is that? So we have a container. We are we have the container. You agree? There's a container. You agree? Yeah, there's a container. In the hypothetical I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah, so there we go. It's over with. We got the container. Boom, we're good. No, okay. Welcome. So, 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 okay, we're in a flat earth. Why is there a pressure gradient? Uh, could be a bunch of different things. Temperature, temperature changes, dynamic systems, a lot of things. As hot air rises, it, hot, hot air gets hot. The sun hits the ground. The air it radiates heat to the gas. Near the ground, the hot air wanna, rises. So the hot air. Rises. I'm in the middle of explaining. Why? Why are you interrupting? Jeremy, you're letting him troll you, man. You're letting him troll you again. He just started out and he said "if," which means he hasn't done it. He no said doubt. If. So, so okay. So, so, so you're confident that, that that's not the case on a container. You need to demonstrate what you're claiming. So you, you, you don't think that would happen? Stop container. trolling, Carlos. I've been listening to you troll for the past hour. Uh, who is this? Flat Earth data, data? Uh, no. Travis. He's already, con he's already conceded the container, so, I mean, we're good. I know, but you're dancing around with him. He's, he's, he's uh, singing the I'm same not, song not, right now. Yeah, Carlos, yeah, you're okay, going to refer so to each of us. Thought, <laughs> it's a thought experiment for him. He said, if this happens, then what do you think? Fucking do it. Carlos, before okay, you that, speak to us, and that's what I Carlos. ask. If you guys, if, hang on, uh, that's what I asked earlier. If you guys require a demonstration, and I will, I will drop the topic and come back with a demonstration, and then we can move on. 
So when you if, refer to us as physical forward, not if your dollar demonstration dollar. has a container in it, if your demonstration has a container in it, you fucking lost. So no, I'm, 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 not that. I was, I was, I'm trying to find out why why we have the gradient. Okay, I can explain one of the reasons why we might have a no, gradient. You threw because... out like five different things. You said magnetism, okay, heat goes up, and the you sun hits the ground. Yeah, you, that's yeah, what you said. Hits, the sun hits the ground. The ground gets hot. It radiates heat to the gas. Hot air rises. As you go up, it gets colder, and then it falls back down. Hot, cold air sinks. Okay. Right. Okay, but um, in, in a hypothetical, if you have a container, just one gas... You don't this have container the sun. Is you not don't hypothetical. Have the, the container is not hypothetical, guys. That's all the real. Right, all right, I'll drop it then. And from now on, you call us, Carlos. Before you address us, you say your score for Jeremy. Or sir, if you go do a demonstration, do one without I, the container. I will come back. I will come. I will come back with a demonstration for you. Without the container. You come back with like Hillbilly Blue Balls, the redneck uh, retard, and come back with gas pressure in a container. Don't come back with gas pressure in a container. Do it without the container. Okay. That's, that's, that's literally how drones work. Because there's higher pressure at the bottom than... than what up are high. you talking about, man? Go away, dude. Shut he up. said he said do it with that container. I said, well, that's literally how dro- how most drones keep their altitude using a barometer. Yeah, but they're measuring that. They're not creating that environment. I know, but he said do it. Okay, never mind. Maybe I didn't understand the. Uh, no, you what didn't. He said. He's not uh, that drone is in a container, well, sir. So yeah, so you you you're assuming that we live in a container, okay? We know. Yeah, because we have there. pressure and a gradient. Yeah. But that's the thing, guys. If if you if you're gonna say that we live in a container, and then invoke the second law of thermodynamics, which says that the pressure will equalize evenly, yeah. then why do we have a pressure gradient? Carlos, here's an example you'll understand. Let's say you go to a Seven Eleven, right, and you're craving. Well, what's your favorite <laughs> kind of Slurpee? Uh, uh, white cherry. Okay, so let's say you go, you want that white cherry Slurpee, right? When you go to the dispenser, <laughs> but you don't have anything to put it in, and you turn that knob, what happens? Like, where does that go? It goes does... down. Yeah, exactly. It, so, it goes everywhere. So you need you to be very upset because I'm making exactly. your store dirty. Yeah, my parents will get mad, right? But you, you get the concept <laughs> now. Yeah. Well, I don't understand the shout uh, out to the mind of God. You're hilarious, man. The Slurpee needs a container, bro. Stop, dude. <laughs> Carlos, do you actually believe you're on a ball? Just be honest with us, man. Or are you just here just to be annoying? No, dude. Both. Okay, okay. All right. All no, right. no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here, here to be annoying. Okay. But, fair but enough. Yeah, so far, so far, everything else that I've seen, it, it points to that. Still All right. uh, Carlos, let me ask you a question real quick because I don't uh, I have experience with uh, with drones. Um, so you're talking about a drone you drone. It's out. It's out. It's out. You said 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 you so you said that a drone keeps its altitude based on barometric pressure. Is that correct? Most of them, yeah. The the uh, the, the prosumer and consumer ones that I've encountered, the ones that I built, uh, they use a barometer. Okay. So then that to me, I would my my initial response is that means that barometric pressure is always constant. It should never change. Because if I want to go up to 1,500 feet and it's not measuring distance but pressure, then that pressure has never is never going to change. Are you telling me that barometric pressure is a constant? No, I didn't. Uh, no, it's it, it's it uses that as reference. So, for example, if if uh, you're how accurate a, is it? How is it off by a couple hundred feet? Uh, it, it's if I don't know, it's it's not 100 percent accurate. But yeah, you know it's, what it's you're talking about. about right now. Yes, I know what I'm talking. about. Okay, so but, how how does a drone get to fourteen hundred feet every single time if the barometric pressure changes? 
uh, because it uses the reference uh, of the ground, whatever measurements at the ground, and know it knows how much it would increase by each foot. So it right, measures from that which point means to that zero, it has to be constant. Zero, if it's off, listen. It's, if it's off by a few degrees, then it's not going to be at the same elevation or altitude. Right, right. That's, exactly. Brandon, put so that, that's put that, what that, hold on, Carlos. That's Carlos. What listen. And Brandon, listen, put that link up on the screen. That is only. That, you don't use the the barometer on a drone for precise measurements. You use that for reference and for altitude hold. Yeah, it's not going to be accurate, but it's it's accurate enough. How accurate is it? Navigate. How close do you yeah. get? Brandon, real quick, put I, that link I posted in general up on the screen for you. I'm I'm per, I'm pretty sure that's going to be like it's going to be off like one or two feet, maybe every hundred feet. I would if I were to guess, but it's yeah, accurate guessing, enough. So you don't know. Okay, thanks. So what? What? So I don't know the accu how accurate it is to the so that, to the centimeter. What's your point? I find it difficult. I find it difficult for anybody to stick with uh, the regulations required for drone flying if uh, you don't know what the fuck the barometric pressure is going to do to your uh, altitude. Dude, all that. All, what the heck? What is that? How is that relevant to anything? If I don't know how exactly you accurate made it, it is, you, you made a statement about listen, what drones listen, do. Listen, oh. listen, listen. If you're gonna talk about regulation, something you, you listen, made a claim. If you're gonna talk, if you're gonna relevant, talk about regulation, you made a claim look, about something look, that drones do, and I'm just asking you a question yes. about what you said. So it is relevant. Yeah. So what? What about it? What? what how is that? You're the one who you know, fucking look, made the, the statement. I'm just asking you about something that you seem to have. Very little understanding. Okay, here, here. Let me let me break it down to you. So your 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 uh, uh, complaint is that for somebody who's going to talk about barometers and this and that, I don't know how accurate it is because you know if you're going to fly stuff and and stay away from from the uh, airspace of uh you know other aircraft and this and that, you need to know. You don't need to know. Look, that's why the 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 ceiling for model aircraft is about four hundred feet. And at 500 how the feet, fuck do you know how high where, to go with the barometric regular pressure aircraft? Change. You could be off. You that's, could be that's off. A hundred, the barometric there's pressure a hundred change. foot buffer. Who cares if it's off one or three or ten feet? How do, you know there's foot foot, foot, how do you know there's a hundred foot buffer? If five hundred feet, I'm pretty sure the FAA. You're has pretty already, sure. You, you know you're saying. This. You're saying I'm pretty sure, and I would guess. Oh, but enlighten me, enlighten me, please enlighten me. No, no like it's not my the claim, team. bro. Why are you putting the burden back on me? This isn't my claim. Look, Carlos, just admit you're not. No, you're not a drone expert, dude. He's asking you I, specific I, I, questions. I, just say you don't know the specifics. Why do you have to make it more? I than told that? him. I gonna... told him I didn't. I said I already said to him that I didn't. And now he said, "Well, you, you, you don't know anything to be talking about this stuff." I, yeah. So I, you made a statement that that drones establish their altitude by mer barometric pressure. And I find that interesting because barometric pressure they establish their altitude. The they same. use that. They use that as reference to keep their altitude, which means that barometric pressure has to be constant. Otherwise, your no, altitude is constant be to off. what? It doesn't have to be constant. So, how is it measuring that, Carlos? It's measuring it against the pressure that's putting on the body of the drone. Is that how it measures it? Do you understand? No, you it's, a, it's it's measuring against a uh, a little. Uh, the sensor has a uh, a wall and it has a capacitor, not capacitor. Uh, it, it changes the resistance on a on a sensor and okay. according to no, I got it. Values, it's like a it's like a crystal, the same kind of thing, right? Those kind of concept, like like a yeah, kind of like a you like think a like a piezo. Okay, yeah, yeah piezo. Got, okay. yeah. got it. Okay, something Fair like enough. that. Fair enough. I won't ask you to spell well, that because I don't know if I could right now. So don't worry. <laughs> so yeah, we're good fine. One. Yeah, but, but I just think it's funny how because I don't know how how uh, to what degree is as accurate uh, the barometer. Then so, somehow that doesn't that doesn't allow me to to speak with uh, confidence about how a barometer works and how it works in a drone. Even though I built a multiple uh, model aircraft and and multi -cupper. So how do you gauge so your drone? how do you gauge your drone's uh, barometer in the device? Do you set it up at all, or is it just a an installation and ready to go? I think it'd be ready to go. It's, and it's like he said, he calibrates it against the surface. So it's only, it's relative yeah, to what's at the surface. So it, yeah, it so has it's a, zero, it's, it's zero, just like a, zero just like there. A scale. Yeah, just yeah. like a scale when you don't have anything on top of it, it's zeros and it, and it measures from there. Yeah, fair enough. That's probably so not the only yeah, thing it uses. So, so does it start at zero at, gra at ground level? And wherever you take off from, it, it'll measure, it start counting from that 
from no, zero up and okay okay so it so yeah. it starts out at zero it doesn't start out at at uh, 14.7 yeah it doesn't it doesn't measure in uh in that in that metric it measures in feet okay so shouldn't your drone installation kit tell you how to understand how your barometric uh your barometer works and say you should understand that at 100 meters the barometric pressure is x does it have any information like that or are you just at the mercy of not even knowing yeah carlos does it give you the formula is what he's no. asking or do you not know that no, you just trust it, it. it does not look the all all the barometer is for is for reference to know whether you're moving up or down so it sure. can allow the drone to keep its altitude. Now, yeah. if you buy a commercial uh, consumer or professional prosumer drone, uh, it'll give you a readout of the uh, of the uh, let's say uh, calculated uh, height that you're uh, that you're flying at by yeah. uh, by using the barometer. So it just gives you a rough idea. So if you want to avoid a hundred foot structure, you say, "Let me go about 120, 150." So I don't hit any of these structures. Sorry, a barometer yeah. is not an altimeter. I'm sorry. And, you know, planes don't measure their altitude with barometers. They use altimeters. Right. Thank you. So, you know, yeah. cut your nonsense so, so short. What, buddy? So what? We're not talking about airplanes. No, go ahead. I wouldn't be surprised drone if the drone used it. is an airplane of sorts by definition. It's, it's an aircraft. Airhead. It's not an airplane. Actually, technically, it's not a drone. Altitude so, is measured with altimeters, so not I'm with barometers. Curious. So I'm curious. Air why pressure is measured with barometers. I'm just curious. Why would uh, a drone, like, if you want to set it at a, at like say 1,400 feet, why wouldn't you just say I want to set it at whatever the the proper pressure reading would be for that height? Why wouldn't you just go by the pressure? Right? Why because, would you, why because, would you because that would be moronic to do. That would be moronic. Uh, no. Yes, that if would nobody your, says. Let me go up fourteen point nine psi. If your <laughs> if your altitude is dependent on barometric pressure, then if you if it's the barometric dependent. is determined, if your altitude is determined, is that better? No, I don't Carlos. know what you're you, Carlos. you need to formulate that statement better because I don't know what the pen is like. Are you serious? If I, if, if, yeah, because I don't know what you're trying to say. Your altitude Cor is not dependent. Correlative. How does that work? Does it does correlative work for you? Correlative. No, no, no. Correlative. If you can correlate barometric pressure with a particular altitude. Why use altitude? Why not just say, let's just go to uh, 73 barometric pressure. I don't even know what the fucking uh, reading is. but because, my, because, like you, because like you said, barometric pressure is not constant. That's why. All right, whatever. So today, today where I'm standing right now, it might be a certain pressure, but tomorrow the barometric pressure will change. So it will be a different yeah, pressure. So yeah, yeah. So fourteen hundred yeah, yeah. feet in altitude could change tomorrow, and and fourteen hundred feet would be less or more. Right, sure. Right. So that's why you. That's why the. Really? That's why the barometer zero calibrates at, at the said, ground right? level and starts measuring from there. Zero. Yeah, that's like saying that the curve of the Earth out on the ocean changes because you can see a horizon at a different position. You're like, oh, I guess the curve just changed. Oh, okay. Somehow, wow. Somehow, this uh, circle back into flat Earth. Yeah, you, know, you just you just made the statement vertically that you can have a different yeah. altitude. Uh, depending on the barometric pressure. Yeah, that that looks like the way it works, though, Travis. That's the way even planes work. So, it, so it out, okay, so that's fine. So altitudes, altitudes are fluid. They're not like set measurements, like a foot, a mile, a kilometer. Yeah, exactly. They're 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 KPA. They're Pascal's. They're proportional to pressure. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. That's, okay. that's just, I'm not. I'm not saying I know it. I'm just saying that that's the way all all tim, all tim, all the meters work. So say that they're flying at thirty five thousand feet. That's not the altitude. It's it's proportional to a pressure measurement relative to the surface. Yeah. Right. So okay, let me say it one more time just to make sure I'm I'm clear. If a if a if a commercial airliner is flying at thirty five thousand feet, that's not its altitude. 
Oh no, sorry, it is. It yes, and it'd be a, and it's the quality of that estimate would be at how well it was calibrated, the pressure relative to the surface. So it's dependent on how well they're measuring the pressure and then calibrating it relative to the surface. But yeah, that is that is the height estimate of the height. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'd like to share with you really quick. Uh, an article that I had for a long time here about uh, the importance of visual horizon for do distance judgments uh, talks about a point-to-point -point view on a surface, on a plane, infinite planes and stuff. Very interesting. Analyze it, read it. Maybe you'll, you'll find some good nuggets in there. Welcome to Flat Earth again. Thank you. Who are you talking to? <laughs> To you, to you, Carlos, and the audience, stop denying that the Earth is flat. Oh, I'm sorry. Stationary, Carlos. Talking, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I wasn't paying attention. I was waiting for the uh, for the Mexican man to finish talking. Carlos, you know nothing. Go on mute. All right. Fair enough. But Carlos, that doesn't hey, change the whole that, that whole discussion was to take away from the fact that those pressures are established relative to a container, needing a container, a surface. So if you give us that, then we'll give you your explanation, whatever you want to explain no. the gradient, that's fine. You can have it. That's fine. Even if you want to explain things falling because of gravity, we'll give you that if you give us the black swan. So are you open to negotiating? No, I'm not going to hey, negotiate. Sound check, sound negotiate. check. Yes, sounds good. You guys can hear me. Yep. We hear you. No echoing or nothing. You sound crisp as a motherfucker. Okay, good, no, because uh, no. I've been having uh, quite the issue with uh, my microphone here in the background. Suddenly, uh, decided my computer decided not to pick up my microphone or let me switch microphones. So, I don't know what the hell's going on. Anyway, for like the last half hour, I've been listening. Uh, you guys did a good job keeping the, the show going, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I have a couple of super chats I need to read. C4 was not happy with your... Uh, your uh, citation. He says, no, silly goose, a citation that says you cannot have gas pressure without a container. Come on, Jeremy, you got this, man. I've got faith. No, no response. That's an absurd, yeah, not, that's that's absurd, absurd, absurd request. request. I'm at work right now. I'm telling you that shit doesn't exist. If he's claiming it does exist, Let's see it, because it'd be fallacious to make someone prove non-existence, right? You know where the burden of proof lies with this. No, but it's, okay, the same, it's, the same, it's the same as saying 2 plus 2 equals 4. Prove that it can't also potentially be 5. Okay, I mean, if you want to, yeah, maybe it can, I guess. That's ridiculous. Like, what kind of, what kind of person would write an article about that? If pressure is defined as it is, force per unit area... Why would there be somebody else who would say, well, you don't need the area all the time? Who Hold on a second. That's like, Brandon, imagine, imagine you said Santa Claus is real. And I said, no, Santa Claus doesn't exist. And you said, yeah, prove he doesn't exist. Right? How ridiculous would that be? Welcome yeah, to Globe Earth. <laughs> yeah, that's like, uh, you know, the gas pressure without a container thing that's analogous to this. It's a burden of proof reversal fallacy trying to make me prove that you can't have, that something doesn't exist. Exactly. Yep. Welcome to Globe Earth. Good morning. Welcome We're to not... the full Globe Earth. We know, Carlos. All you guys got is fallacies and, and bullshit. One more uh, super Globe chat. Earth. James Richard, is it possible to join? And I saw Ranty did give you the uh, link to the Discord. And you can always find it in the description if anybody wants to join the panel. And then you go into the Discord, and on the left you'll see show channel. You should automatically have access to join the uh, show channel. So come on in. Okay. That was a good discussion. Yeah, it's much more level without rumpus. It's just a more calming, you know. Right. So. Oh, that was a good impression. I thought the Got him. was on mute. But yeah, was I good. thought it was. Nearly there. <laughs> Don't even joke about it. Hold on. <laughs> Shout out to SC <laughs> Montreal. Dude, Rumpus was uh, was angry yesterday, dude. Sometimes he comes in decent, sometimes he comes in like like his mom didn't tuck him into bed the night before or something. <laughs> Just mad. 
but lately he's been pretty chill. Like when we were talking about the test and he was calculating shit for us and, and being semi chilled. Yeah. But yeah, he went back to his old self last night. Something something right. triggered him. Can't get as right. bad as flip flop though. Flip-flop. I'm just reading an, an article that I found and I'm I'm in shock because over here say to date only one experiment one experiment has explored the influence of manipulations to the visible horizon on perceived absolute distance i go like what the hell is this so messing and dorgin 2005 i open it and he's using a vr system he say can we manipulate the the horizon with a vr system and that's what he's using so he's using some kind of computer game program to quote unquote the only experiment manipulating the horizon Globers, this is sad, ballers. Carlos, what you got to say about that? Uh, I'm even more impressed that you can read. <laughs> Took the words out of our mouth. Mic check, mic <laughs> check. What's going on, everyone? Matrix, what up? What up? We can't we can, we can hear you, man. <laughs> What's, What's up, Carlos? Matrix? Hey, man. What's up, bro? What's going on, everyone else? Matrix, we need we need to meet, man. One day, hang out, eat some uh, Cuban sandwiches. <laughs> cool, no problem. And maybe we can go have a slurpee or two over there at the Surax <laughs> place. Carlos, are you obeying social distancing on the, on the daily? Uh, on the day, no, because because of work, I have to I have to go and uh, go to people's home. And work on their uh, services. Okay. So you have to follow the you have to follow the work, you know, kind of rules and stuff. Yeah, I, ha- I have to work. Yeah, follow the guidelines regarding COVID, whatever my my employer uh, tells me to do regarding. You already that, got the shot, Carlos? Heck no. What do you mean? I'm gonna I'm 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 wait until everybody else gets it, and then I'll be like, "All right, if it's live, if it's, live stream it, so we can applaud." Want- so we can clap one to one hundred. Be like, all right. Now, if people start, you know, getting uglier than me, then I say, like, all right, no, no go. Maybe it'll help you grow another brain, like that has more critical thinking. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, don't, I think, I think if, I think if my employer pushes, says I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, yeah, no, I'm okay. I think I can refuse, and you know, I'll do it in my own terms, but. We'll see. I thought, we'll see how I thought this was your job. <laughs> yeah. I work for Carlos. Carlos is my employer. He paid me with Super Chats once a month, $2 Super Chat. Thank Jose, you. Jose, are you going to get it? Dang, Jose. I'll... What, the vaccine? Jose, oh, I'm hell, a member. Yeah. hell fucking no. Cool. I'm a member, Jose. It's oh, you a member? Two, yeah, two, yeah man. Two. Fucking hey, yeah, bro, bro. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for That's paying. That's what me. I thought. Shoot, I got, I got perks. I, I get. Uh, Jose send me nudes every month. <laughs> yeah, pictures of my yes. third nipple every month. Only <laughs> fans. <Raw pictures>. <laughs> <laughs> but all the all the military people on the baller side are definitely gonna get it. So that's like FTFE and all those people. I guarantee you, they're gonna, ah. they may have already. Well, that's gonna that's gonna clean up the uh, the airwaves or the uh, tube waves, that you know, good. Yeah. I mean, that's not good for you. So if something goes wrong, then they'll go away. Yeah, I don't know. I think they're gonna put it to to, to the point that we're we're gonna have to get it, like, cause they're gonna put it that we have to get it to go to supermarkets and to like to go on a plane and stuff. But- Exactly. Yeah, so they're gonna make still, it so uncomfortable for us uh, unless we want to become hermits. Yeah, but still, I don't think that this is the uh, quote unquote um, uh, mark of the beast, though. Well, I don't, I don't know if Brandon wants us talking about that. We can discuss oh. that. Well, he can. He, well, he can, can, he can, can shut me down whenever he wants. Whenever he wants. Oh, oh, yeah. Flatter oh, channels, yeah. channels, channels don't censor. That's right. Sorry, I thought, it was, cool. I thought it was somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> If it does if it become does like that, how could, like how, that, could how, could how could it not be? Echo, echo, echo. Yeah. Flat, Man, flat guy, Earth sensors, flat Earth channels, flat Earth channels don't, don't censor. YouTube does. 
thank you to you too for not allowing us to speak what we want uh, without taking a chance to be taken down. So what, Jose, you flip-flop today? Oh, hi, I'm new. I'm a flat earther. Who are you? Matrix? Hello. Earth is flat, space is fake. That rover mission from yesterday is a joke. All Earth is so ridiculous. All of it. It's re redundant. Re redundant? That's a, that's a Spanish <laughs> The Earth joke. is like very flat. No? Okay. Yeah, in Spanish, I mean, if, if Earth was flat, it was called... Uh, it, why is it called planet? Planet means plane. If it was round, no, it no, will no. be called rounded, like round no, or something. No, but it's, it's called planet, it's plain. Okay. Plain T with a terrain. Plain what do you terrain. guys make of those pilots who come forward and say that they, they assume it's flat and is flat? What do you think? you think that's fake or they don't know or I, what? I, I, I think that, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> what they say? Yeah, I mean, uh, as how many how many pilots? I mean, what's the ratio to uh, flat Earth pilots to non flat Earth pilots? Here's an example. Recently, I talked to two of them who were furloughed with United, and um, I thankfully gave me his business card, and I followed up with an email, and I asked him, you know, have you ever um, had anybody come up to you about the flat Earth? And he's like, nope. And I'm like, do you, do you know that it is flat? And he's like, he's like, I'm, he's like, I don't know about that. That's a quote. I don't know about pilot. That. I have to. I spoke with commercial pilots and all pilots military pilots and they say they don't have to know the shape of the earth to fly the planes they just follow they just go from point a to point b they have no idea that what shape the earth is no, they just fly the plane some of them teach you know and they're instructors so yeah they would know for sure it's not just uh go here there you don't you don't just well, get I mean, a license if, like that if you fly if you fly a cessna around your your city in your you know your county yeah yeah i don't think you need to know but if you're going to start calculating, uh, you know, fuel and directions and. and but, you know, pilots don't have fast. to do it. Pilots don't have to do that for Carlos. They, yeah, yeah, people exactly. up yeah, there, exactly. the people in the base, yeah. they do that for you. Yeah, exactly. just it isn't like pilots just go up flying That's with right. many. Like, let me just go to the bodega on the plane. You know, they, 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 they give them a clear route for them to fly. Yes. So whatever's outside of that route is they don't. It, it isn't in their they world. Are, so it doesn't they, are, matter they, are provided, they are provided the tools that have taken into consideration and into account the uh, sphericity of the earth. Yeah. No, dude. What are you talking so, about? They that's you're just, presupposing that, Carlos. You're presupposing go, that. It's not a video game, man. You have to like do hundreds of hours. You have to study. It's not just randomly. No, uh, no, no, no. I'm there. just talking about no, no, Carlos. The no, you yeah, Carlos. Stupid? You say they're giving the tools, but why? Why do you have to take that jump and add that equation of there have to be a curvature and, and all the stuff? You don't have to add that to that tool. That's what you've been told. I am I am I am agreeing with you that they don't have to know because they are given the tools and the tools are gonna be made uh, whether the uh, you know either taking their earth uh, curvature into account or not taking their earth curvature into account when they do the mapping and the plotting. Yeah, I'm just saying they don't have to know or care about it, they just follow. Follow the routes that they give them. Yeah, I'm you agreeing with you. don't think they you. need to know whether it's a curved surface that's moving when they're doing things, like studying to be a they pilot. Don't need, no, they that. don't need to know. Oh my gosh, dude! Wow, bad time to be a baller. Actually, they don't. They don't really need to know, though. Mind of God. Why yeah, would they exactly. not? What do you mean? Those are two very, very different realities. They're two very, very different. Who is it specifically? Yeah. Who is it specifically? They don't need to know. Needs to know? Let's say a pilot needs to go from point A to point B. All the communication shut down. He said, all right, I'm just going to keep at 30,000 feet flying. And I'm just going to level and fly, level, follow the, the horizontal and go 30,000 feet until, oh, I see whatever. I'm going to land here. They don't need to know the shape. They're just going to follow an altitude. Yeah, they do exactly what you just said. They fly up level. They land yeah. on a non-rotation. Yeah, so what, what, yeah. what, what if they have, what if they have crosswind? They, you know, then they're going to be off, right? Exactly. Good point. They're oh, they're gonna be off like a motherfucker, but they so, should follow an altitude. They, they, it's that not that they're gonna just saying. hold the hold the steering wheel and go up to space. They they're gonna follow an altitude, whatever shape it is. They're gonna follow. I want to keep at twenty thousand feet. I'm gonna keep at twenty thousand yeah. feet. Well, I, think, I think that there's a that way that we could flat Earth or globe Earth. 
You heard, guys? I think there's a way that we could discern or at least um logically deduce. Uh, How? The, 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 well, there has to be some sort of limit on, on these manuals, right? So pilots have to at least know, even though they have a a, a, a route that they have to take, but there, there has to be something that says don't fly above so-and-so limit, right? Don't go past yeah, well, they, so-and-so. There has to be some sort of limit where they know that they... Uh, the plane they wouldn't, maneuver, yeah. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't, don't go over the Bermuda yeah. Triangle. But I don't... Yeah, I don't... I don't yeah, they, they try to go up, up, up 50,000 feet. The plane is not just not going to go. It's just not going to go up. It will, it will just... Well, well duh, yeah. Hold. What about it? So what? You're telling me it's going to stop like that like that drone video that just stopped? Or, or is it like going to gradually just fall back down? It's going to... Yeah, dra- have you seen Iron it's, Man it's, one? When they, they, he keep flying and you just stop and no, freezes? it's probably going to yeah. stall because you don't have enough... Enough... Uh, the air is going to be thinner and thinner. And yeah, that's, that is if your engines keep working. But yeah, I mean, you can't keep going up. Air is getting thinner and thinner and you're going to have to be a lot, lot faster uh, or have bigger... Um, surface area on your on your wings, or and also have to with a keep your your propulsion system going, whether it's jet or propellers. Yeah, but I think I think Matrix up. is making the argument that he can go as high as you want, and you will continue to keep going high. Matrix, is that it or not? I'm getting. Confused. I don't know what the heck you guys are saying. What sort of parameters to start somewhere um, that you can make like a logical assumption. Even though it's, a, it's an assumption, is it, in a flight manual somewhere it says it, it it isn't advisable to go past you know whatever distance. I guess so, we could so have, assume I... from there, but it, it will only be an, a, an assumption, um, some sort of distance loan limit or whatever. Well, limit to what? I don't understand what you're saying. Well, it, if you're talking, if you want to talk about some sort of dome or limit to to the the shape of the Earth. I, I think it's just the mechanism. The plane will just, uh, uh, they, I don't think the, the engines will work on none of that. It will just kind of just mm-hmm. like, uh, start malfunctioning. It will just not go. Yeah, you, 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 take a, Cessna, you take a Cessna above 18,000 foot, it's not going to run. You, you lose lift also on those small wings. It all depends <laughs> how thick the air is. Yeah, it doesn't have to do with any like container or dome. It just, it just will malfunction. It just. Not gonna work. So you guys are telling me that apart from that, from that, that it does that. Nobody, nobody really knows what else is up there above, above that. You're limit? correct. You're correct. Yes, Carlos, prove me wrong. Nobody have been higher than a limit that a plane can be built on Earth, no matter uh, how big it is. How? How? Show me evidence that something being higher than a plane. Uh, aircrafts. I mean, uh, spacecrafts. Oh, Apollo, spacecraft. Jet, what? Gemini. How about um, um the balloons? Those balloons, do they also reach yeah. that limit where it doesn't go they, higher? Well, they go, they yeah, they explode. 150,000. 150, they explode? Feet. Pressure gets them. Damn, that doesn't seem very safe then. They expand to the limits of their container and then they explode. And then their inner yeah, gas. There's less, less the pressure. Outer yeah. container. Still a container. You're containing you, gas you rising up. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm winning, too. <laughs> We're talking about uh, flat Earth stuff and moon uh, moon landing and uh, rover landing on Mars at the table, too. They're all laughing. Well, you know it's real because it looks so fake, though. Yeah, I'll give him that. That's the only way it looks real. So it does look bad. <laughs> That's good. The faker it looks, the more real it is, man. According to Elon. Uh, well, do them, I mean, they could literally tell us anything, you know. James Richard, if you are on Discord in your phone, Android, look in your, uh, look in your the left hand side, swipe, and you're gonna see a list. Scroll down, and there's going to be a show channel. You're going to see all the names in it of us. Click on that and click join the call or join the voice. Uh, because you are in Discord, but you have to go to the left, find the voice channel called show channel. Just Click on it and join. Thanks, Jose. I was just typing that out. It saved me some typing. Uh, now that we have a break. Yeah, James, you'll see it on the left. You'll see text channels. And then you'll see voice channels, and under that, there's one called show channel. And just click on show channel; it should put you right in there. He, hearing um, Jose give instructions is the equivalent of reading Chinese instructions in English. 
Jose is basically hosting the show tonight, so I appreciate it. But uh, B-Ball for life, $5. 90% of the soldiers in my company have already gotten the vaccine. They're all doing fine. Well, no one said that people were going to drop dead, B-Ball. Uh, we just con- concerned about the long-term well, effects. Those guys uh, are messed up in the head already anyway. <laughs> just kidding. And they do pump you full of all kinds of vaccines and shit when you're in the military. I remember walking out of a theater after like a briefing and they'd say, okay, stand in line behind this table and then just shoot you in the arm. Like, well, what was that? Oh, it was anthrax number two. Like, okay, whatever. Uh, listen, for J799, Jose thinks he is trolling, but he's finding it very easy to debunk globe tards right now. LOL. Thank you, leaping for J. Uh, and I said, you'd pretty seamlessly go back between the two, uh, Jose. Uh, James Richard, $5 within Discord. Who do I search for to join? I'm on the phone, so it's not giving me what you said. Hopefully, you can find it with the instructions that uh, Jose just gave. Thank you very much for that, Jose. That's it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Why yeah, you think I'm trolling? Your mic, your mic sounds like shit, shit, bro. My mic sounds like shit? Yeah, and like your vo- it's, it's distorting your voice. Like, it doesn't even sound the same. Sounds different, oh. but not like shit. Not that bad, you know. I think I'm gonna have to deal with it right now, just because of the, the my uh, computer's not picking up any of the drivers for my mics. It's all fucked up. I have to restart, and uh, obviously I can't do that right now. We only got 20 minutes left. Hopefully, it's not so bad that we can't deal with it. But anyway, um, speaking of plane flight, Jose, do you remember that conversation on your show I had with Blue? where he essentially said that there's no difference between flying. There's nothing you can, a pilot could tell uh, the difference between flying over a flat plane and over a uh, spherical rotating earth. I do remember that. That's why I mentioned, I say I spoken with pilots. That's why I mentioned, because I have heard, I have asked blue in, in my own time and maybe in the same conversation, uh, but as a pilot, you don't need to know what the shape of the earth is. If you think, you don't have to think whatever. You just go, learn everything you need to know about planes. You go in the plane and you just follow the instructions. And he agreed. I mean, you don't have to know what the shape of the earth is. You don't have to get, get any visualization on what, what is the whole surface where you're flying above. It, it is what it is. All you really much have to know is where not to go, right? Don't go above so-and-so distance. Don't go, uh, that, you know, that's pretty much what they have to know. Those, yeah, but you say that like those things are there to keep you from the truth, but they're they're probably there because of safety. And for I mean, what, what, whatever you want to call it, you know, safety yeah. rules, uh, you know, okay. whatever no, label, you, yeah, whatever but, label you want to slap on it. Well, you just saying it as if like, oh, they just tell you not what to do, so you don't find out the truth. That's that's really what you're saying. Tell me if you know if I'm wrong, but and I'm telling you that stuff that is in the manual probably just to keep uh, somebody to wrecking the. The aircraft, or or running out of fuel for doing something stupid. Yeah, don't go off your off your uh your um fly path. You know you'll have to mess up, lose more more fuel that you need to, or don't go this a uh, lot higher than this because it, your aircraft's not gonna perform efficiently and you're gonna run out of fuel. You know it's maybe you should look into why those things are there. So saying. Oh, we need to look at the manual because things are there to keep people from going to certain places to finding out the truth. I mean, but the why though, the, the why though is, is it, they're just gonna give me a story, right? Because there is no way I can verify the why. They can say whatever they want. They usually say that you know it's for our safety or whatever, and we pretty much just have to so, take it. So, so unless you take an aircraft and go and do what they say not to do, then you will not be convinced because anybody can give you any story. See this hyper uh, skepticism, man. It's it's. It's not bueno, man. I mean, do you think absolute power corrupts absolutely? It can, yeah. Power, Power can corrupt, yeah. Well, I see no no logical reason. I see no reason for me to trust any so-called government. Now, now, I'm not saying that I don't see the good in government and the, the necessity of government. But I don't necessarily have to trust it, right? That you know, I still have, I still have the right w- whether to be suspicious or not. Look, and it sounds say, like you're suspicious if you don't want to take the vaccine that your very same government is providing for you. 
yeah, I'm not arguing that. But I'm just saying you you sound very hyper skeptical when you're saying that oh, there's things that are in the manual that tell them not to do is because because they want to keep the truth. And I'm going like, dude, you know. Notice, you know like what? You're... I never said that though. I just I just implied okay, so that what, there so... could be a possible truth there, but I never really said that it is because of. You know, it could be because of safety. Yeah, because blinded. if you continue flying that direction, you're gonna hit a wall and kill yourself. So you know, you want to call yeah. it safety. Then it's gonna be safety. Cool. So you will never know unless you actually, um, you know. But that's part of the things that most people won't ever know. You do understand that, right, Carlos? Uh, yeah, vaguely, but yeah. Do you find it curious that there's nothing a pilot has to do to account for the fact that he's on a giant uh, spinning sphere? That's, no, it's not. It's not any any different than a driver that's driving doesn't have to account for that, unless you're talking. Well, there about is a big difference. See, a driver is attached to the ground. They're they're oh, actually okay. attached to the solid surface, whereas a pilot is in a gas cloud that's above the uh, solid. Well, uh, what about the whole thing seems a very convenient, like it's designed exactly to give you the impression that you're on a flat plane. Do you see where we could draw that conclusion? I mean, I see hey, how it's, how, it's what physics, you know, what the man. Is drawing, but magic that's, balls, that's, uh, that's, physics, that's, right? That, that, I don't know about <laughs> magic balls, but they used to call me on high school. Um, you know, you're talking about that if you are flying, that the earth. If you're assuming that if you if you're flying that the earth should rotate below you, then yeah, that will kind of, I guess, spark some sort of questions or whatever. But that wouldn't be the case, anyway. No. No, so I, I get it. Supposedly, this uh, cloud of gas, the atmosphere, is moving in lockstep with the Earth as it rotates. So there's there's no difference. I mean, it behaves exactly as it would. Over a but, flat stationary plane, there's just really what no if way it was, to tell. What, what if it was a geocentric model where everything is revolving around the Earth? The Earth is stationary. Would an airplane the same thing? Would an airplane would would they have to know whether the Earth is round or not round? Uh, so they don't have gas pressure without the container, no matter what fucking. Uh, yeah, back to the back to your second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, cool, man. Can you uh, demonstrate anything? No, to answer about your the question, world? though, I think you're. I think no? you're right. It would be different. It would be. It would be more in line with uh, a, a flat plane than if it were rotating. I mean, we can we can agree. There's definitely no rotate. Well, nothing to do with rotation saying, yeah, that if, pilots if, have to if, take if, into if account. You, right. When you're saying if you take the globe and you and you remove the the rotation of of the Earth uh, of the, from the equation, then you know, would you agree that you wouldn't have to know whether it was flat or round? For the airplane to, you know, be able to fly. Airplane, I think the fact that it is uh, a ball as opposed to flat, if they're both stationary, isn't as big a deal as it being a ball and rotating at the same time because of the dynamics gotcha. that that creates. Gotcha. That's what I was gaming. At. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Well, except yeah. the water wouldn't be horizontal. It'd be curved. Right. Well, yeah. There's that. Okay. Yeah, there's that big giant weird thing about the globe. Yeah, none, of, if, none of these things they say would work uh, on a globe. They can demonstrate yes, it, it all. You if can't you demonstrate gravity, anything would. about your globe. If you had gravity, it would work. But you guys <laughs> negate gravity. You can't so recreate. That's... You can't even recreate the mechanism of gravity on your globe. We don't. We don't oh, really you know, negate just, gravity, Carlos. But it's just you, know, you could call, you you know, call the, the effect of things going down whatever you want. It's just you can't uh, prove uh, every uh, aspect uh, of gravity. How does he know it would work? How does he know it would work? That's what I want to know. Did you turn it off one time and see that it didn't work? No. Uh, really quick, James Richard, if you are listening, alert. I sent you a direct message uh, with three screenshots, the three steps you got to follow. So in your phone, open open Discord in the top the left. Show. You're going to have you're going to have a, a number, uh, a little red notification. Okay. Click on it. And this is a message from me. With the three steps that you gotta follow to join the voice call. That's all. All right. I wanna. I'm gonna. I'll, I gotta go for a little bit. I gotta go reset somebody's Wi-Fi. I'll be back. This is Brandon's show. Thank you for having me. Slash Jose. <laughs> Thanks, Jose.
Is that what they call it these days? I gotta go set somebody's Wi-Fi? Is that like hanging out or hooking up? <laughs> no, I'm literally still that's the way. new that's the new hey, age hey, term. Hey, 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 I already called for I gotta go take a crap real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Wi Fi and chill. Wi Fi and chill. Jose, are you yeah. still PMSing, man? You got a little Dang. bitchy with me yesterday. I don't know what that is. You doing right? PMS PMSing? Yeah, I don't know I'm what that is. I haven't seen you in a while, clearly. Any How chat or anywhere? To know that he hasn't even never been with a woman. Not gonna know what PMS is. Yeah, but I don't know. I haven't seen you, clearly, in the days. Oh, okay. I guess you don't even recall cussing me out two days ago. Oh That's no, fine. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. No problem. Must have been flip flop. I really don't remember, uh, man. Clearly, Jose is a, uh, a flat earther today, so. Oh, more, I see. Oh, than, see. More yeah. importantly yeah. than Jose's nonsense, I heard Bev put out a real nice banger of a video there. Yeah, which one? <laughs> the 11-hour video? Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> 11 hours, was that his uh, his uh, time in Gems last, uh, yeah. week, was it last week? Yeah. It was two days yeah, ago. Was I was in there too. There. Holy shit. It, dude, it didn't even seem like we were in there for just a couple hours. It's a it fucking a black hour. hole of time in there. Yeah, the t- it was like a time warp, man. It's, it's like, like when you start watching there. TikTok. You start watching TikTok, you're like, I'm going to just watch five minutes of TikTok. Next thing you know, fucking eight hours went by. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't mean to interrupt the conversation. I just wanted to give Jose. No, it's fine. I was actually talking about this. Bev, Bev put a video on 100 meters. Oh, Rob, yeah, Rob yeah. Is in here top. yeah. Yeah. That should be a doozy. No drop over the 100 meters, huh? Yeah, we're going to be doing like, you know, 400 meters. But then that, Ruhiv said you should have 3.1 millimeters. Which, you know, we won't have. That'll be a good one. Well, there should there should have been dropped over the hundred meters, no? Yeah, I don't know what it was on that. That's pretty small. Very, so you very get out minimal. to four hundred. Yeah. Get out to four hundred. You got three point one millimeters. That's something you can measure. Definitely. How's he going to measure it? Uh, with the uh, water level and. Uh, Probably an auto level doubled up, you know, to create a horizontal. Okay. You guys realize that you can create a horizontal with an auto level, right? That's yeah, we know that. Here. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. some people misunderstand uh, that we do realize that you can create a horizontal and all these things are horizontal. Mm-hmm. Um, but we want to take the optics and any refraction and light out of it as variables so those can't be used as excuses at all that's what that's what we're on about we understand that a water level creates a horizontal oh yeah so we uh, agree with 50 that meters. at 50 meters man you can see uh the uh, rod real clear at about 75 meters you can see the shimmering refractive effect on it so you know it, there's no problem doing 50 uh 50 meter well, yeah, even they say that, that at 50 meters, it's they're not going to say you're going to measure curvature over that far, or 75. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you just do increments of 50, and you go all the way up to 400, you know. But uh, the uh, I'll, we'll show you the shimmering effects on the uh, on the measuring rod when you get out to 75 meters in the uh, direct sunlight. It's just kind of all over the place. You can't really read it. I mean, you, you, you can see it, but, you know, it's just, you know how it gets. It's kind of refractive. Even at 75 meters. So you think maybe your measurement is impacted even at 75 meters? or? Oh, no, not the measurement. But, you know, to, you want to be able to read the rod. So you come back to 50, and you know that you don't have optical distortion. Hello. Yeah. How's it going? I'm just... I have a vicious dog here now. Okay. <laughs> Can I come in? All right. 
Appreciate hot it. Hot mic, Carlos. Hot you mic. Have your phone. Uh, Let's no. listen to him. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a Verizon goes crazy all the time. Hey, Carlos. Look, the kids want me to go Are back you to like the old style? <laughs> That's what I think you're hearing. Carlos, we can he's, hear you. Okay. Working. He's, uh, he's solid That's, he a or something. That's all I know. That's so sweet. Uh, he's so, resetting his uh, Wi-Fi. So you're trying to get a landline? Yeah. Okay. It's connected still. Let's That'll see. be over in a couple hours. Well, don't worry. My daughter tried to do it and she couldn't. Okay. There we go. All right. It didn't so, sound like it was Clary, good. I don't know about all of it except Okay. You said you get 50 meters max through the autolite? No. No, not at the autolite and not max. But not under, bad at auto. Under a high, um, you know, like a, a, a bright condition, you know, you're going to get a lot of refraction. So when we were looking at the rod at 50 meters, it was very, very clear. You know, and you don't have to worry about optical distortion at that distance so i mean that's even what the main surveyor says too so he and so when he, when he when he goes 400 okay. feet how are you going to get it at to go 400 feet would be my question well you guys you got to go in increments you go from one point to the other right 50 foot increments all the way down the line right Mark yeah and you're, you're going to use more you're gonna use more than one stake, though, right? When you when you mark your stakes, yeah, you do a front sight and a back sight, and then you do a front sight and a back sight. You're constantly overlapping fifty percent on every shot, so there's no. So when you when you look to the front, you're 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 looking at you're you're gonna set up two rods and then move it. So when you look back, you're looking back at two 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 rods, or yeah, let's say you set up a position B. Uh, and you look at position C and back at A, right? Then you move to C, look back at B, look forward to D. So you're constantly overlapping. You know, so what, what's that? Called? You know, double, double, uh, double riding. Is, is that what it is? Yeah, you, yeah, you could do that, but you know, you might as well just go out there and do it one time, right? Do it one time, right? Put your water level. Okay. Good. Um, I can't help with that. Uh, they have, they'll have to install this, yeah. But that one, this one has one, yeah. Yeah, well, I'd be interested in seeing the, the plan. That's what's in the video that Beth put out, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what uh, is in that video. But it's hard to think with carpets. Now I can't hear him. Uh, Brandon, one more attempt. If I turn on my camera to show, to give James a quick walkthrough, how to do this. Uh, oh, shit, it's too bright. Damn it. Let me lower the capacity of this shit. All right, okay. so yeah. if I'm... Okay. Uh, I'm on the Android. All right, you're going to have the menu. If you click up here in the top, you're going to see the lines. You're gonna find Brandon server icon. Click on that. After right, you click it. on the yeah. server. Ah, oh, you here? You can hear me. Fucking hey. If you can there hear you. me. All right. <laughs> I'll mute so, yeah, my camera got... because yeah. Uh, yeah. I see it. We got the new, I feel down now, new test set up at 400 meters. If anybody wants to see it, you can come over and check it out anytime. Can you guys hear? Me? Okay. Yeah. So w what's up, Mr. James Richard? How you doing, man? Good man. Now, now I just you know lost train of thought on what I wanted to say. Trying to figure out how to join. It. I got right, it. Well, I got it for the no next time. No hurry. Whenever now, you maybe. think of it. Are you a flyer or a glober? We need to label you somehow. Yeah, no labels. I'm a flat earther. All right. All right. How flat are you? Well, you got uh, it now. I years. I spoke in. I think I spoken with you, James, right? Uh, a while ago, maybe about a year ago, whatever. Let's talk for a bit. Yeah, we've spoken, Jose. For sure. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, but at least now you know how to join, and now you, Brandon, is gonna have a new voice over here, and they're gonna be happy to hear you. You, you okay, man? I appreciate the help, Jose. Yeah, welcome to the show, man. 
Did you say your daughter connected or your granddaughter? Who was it? All right, guys. Well, we got a, yeah. They they hooked up the wrong wire, so that's why it wasn't working. Anything, uh, they they hooked us up to the wall. The that's why the motor wasn't working. But uh, put out there, put your there is that phone now. Anything. So you should be good to go. So when they come back, they can set yeah, up the other phone set. And go seven geometric facts of reality. If you get a chance, or and come by and look at the four hundred meter water level. Maybe you uh, can, real quick, you try to do that yourself. So, really sorry, Clary. Real quick, yeah, I, really I had horrible. a mute. Anybody could do it. I had to mute Carlos. I server muted yeah. him in case he comes um, back. Okay. Yeah, anyway, the 400-meter water level test is anything, you know, pretty simple anyone can do. That's very affordable to, you know, get what you need to do it. And, uh, you know, we can kind of help you. I mean, like, if you do it, right, if Bev does it, he'll prove it to himself, right? But He's not going to prove it to Jim Panda, so you know you got to go out and do it for yourself. Anybody can Nothing's do it. Be Jim Panda, but yeah, no, I hear. Oh yeah. All right, I think Carlos is back. <laughs> Carlos was making all sense. Matt, yeah. You were hot. Matt crazy. took a come out. NASA could come out and say the Earth is flat. Jim, Jim, them guys still want to believe him. Oh yeah, they're just trolls. They were trolling so Christians sorry, guys. five years before they came over here and started trolling flat earthers five years ago. It's just what they did. I re I remember what I was gonna. I remember what I was gonna say if I get a chance to speak. You're speaking right now. Yeah, go for it, man. So I was listening uh, earlier. Somebody was bringing up uh, engineers stretching out a line over the earth. Are you referring well, to we, the mind I, of God? He was talking about using GPS. Yes. But what I don't get is why, why you would have to have engineers or the light, two light sources at a foot above the, just for waves, maybe maybe two feet. You know, that the light is the line. So if you're 14 miles away from each other, and there's water between you. Refraction. If you can see those. <laughs> you can see those. Well, yeah, but you you wouldn't be able to see it if there's a hill in the way. Refraction. How many hills? How many hills have you seen a car go over? And yet you can see the car, but it's over the hill. That's very small Zero. scale. It's like Ranty used to say, how long would you stare over a hill waiting for something to get loomed back up again? Yeah, it's you can't say refraction. You'll never see that on. Yeah, the hill is too much of a. Um, the hill is the blocking world. the light. It's blocking the light that can get to you. Yeah, you, absolutely. You won't see. So your straight line is a light source. You don't need. Yeah, your line of sight is always my... a straight line. Wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think the mind of God is just trying to come up with something that doesn't rely on on uh, optics as well. On optics. Yep. And his idea so is optics to use rely on GPS light. GPS to compare and light bands and uh, a data set well, against whatever. something that he knows is a straight line. The difficulty is going to be finding a, stri a straight line to use as your baseline. How do you how do you measure something without optics physical physical measurement you know take, take a tape measure yeah, to it with a long are, tape are measure your, are your eyeballs optics no yes. when we say optics we're talking more about long range like looking down uh, a few miles using a telescope or a theodolite or binoculars or a camera not so not walking up to something looking with your eyeballs does a theodolite take into account refraction? And if they do, uh, what is the equation? The theodolite is not an accurate instrument over a long distance. If you There's want to always accurate, some margin of error. Yeah. The, the equation, I'll give you the equation for when they're using theodolites and auto levels over this ridiculously long distance. The equation is whatever matches the globe, and they, and they just work it out. Yeah, they've got some equation that they yeah. use, and they've got some adjustment for refraction that they use. But 
that's kind of part of what we want to confirm with the physical measurement. Confirm or falsify, either one. Or, or just check with a sniper and they'll let you know. They can see pretty far. On a well, there's some snipers that say we have to take your... it into account. We don't have to take it into account. So that's, you know. The textbooks say but, there's but something to worry using, about. Uh, yeah. When you're using the telescope or the theodolite over long distance, any sort of zoom capability, are you not looking through that with your eye? Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, I guess. Right. I, I don't know if you're looking through it. So whatever information you receive through that telescope, is determined from your like it yeah I, your I your it. eye is your sensor uh right what happens so to I, the what information I'm saying is I don't get from... how I don't get how you zoom in on a car go over a hill you'll never see it again no matter the refraction it, once it's over the hill it's done well, yeah, they think that light is it. bending up. So when you when you uh, s still see it, it's already over the hill. That's what they try to tell us. Is that what they're saying? It's already over the hill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's that, not that what we say. Seeing, like we're the laser at twenty-one miles. That it. But is... what's the evidence for that? What is the evidence? Okay, the car is already over the hill. What is the evidence for that? Well, nobody, opinion, nobody's saying isn't. that about a heel. I don't. I don't think there is. They just extrapolate refraction, Snell's law, and uh, the bending light in small laboratory experiments over the long my distances chance. to exactly. to match their model. In my opinion, that's exactly. Yeah, right. I agree. That's where I was going. Yeah, mic check. Oh, totally. We're totally on the same page. Um, mic check. The, part of what this physical measurement would do. It is falsify a lot of those assumptions. Yeah, exactly. Have. We have no issues with optics, just on a small scale. How does someone not understand that, dude? We're, like, how? That's the real issue here. We don't have any issues with optics being used twenty feet away to come up with like a daisy chain point to create a straight line. Whatever they use, they can make. They use string. We don't care. It's just the whole idea is to eliminate, potentially take the entire channel which is miles in these experiments, tests, and just get it down to a local level. And then whatever technique these surveying companies use, that we trust that. Yeah, if you watch the Illinois Surveyor on YouTube, Illinois Surveyor Differential Leveling, you will learn a shit ton about what you can do, what the professionals do. Not the YouTube curveyor, you know. Yeah, exactly. But, but the real guys. The fact that ballers so analogy... think that it's so hard to make a straight line proves that it's flat and straight because it's not hard. Like, there's no way that that's complicated to do it in a whole bunch of different ways. And then to p then make a straight line that they can go and physically access and then get GPS coordinates along that is not rocket science. If we can't do that, then how did we get on Mars? Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> how did we get on Mars? Oh, my God. So, you really think we went there? <laughs> no, but you know, like it's not yeah. it's not hard. I'm not trying to be rude like to their industry because it's not simple, but uh you know. It's <laughs> it's funny like they're like flying is easy, you know, whatever. It's not that hard. Just get in the plane, go point to point, no big deal. But making a straight line for an engineering company in 2021 is like, "Oh, no way. Really? Like, oh, how's that? How are they going to do that?" Yeah, Come call on. a surveyor. They can, ask them. They can do that in now. Yeah, a, I'm going to. I'm going to. Yeah. Can you, can I just you want, establish a horizontal? Ask them, can you establish so, a horizontal line over a mile? They'll say, absolutely. Not yeah, a but the critical thing, clearly, is to give us GPS along that that is very sensitive, like very you know precise. GPS, yeah, you know, like the points that uh, Kozlowski picked up across the uh, Ponce Train Causeway. All of those mm -hmm. points were already measured, and his GPS was able to just establish those points, right? As he traveled, what well, engineering? What well, engineering company have been contacted to attempt to do this, man? I'm gonna call them. There's, we got we got a bad oh, okay. storm here, but I just I I'm, it's more I know they can do it. It's just how much. It's obvious they can do it because you can rent the equipment and do it yourself, like that individual earlier was talking about, and that's cool. You know, I just I personally don't have the expertise to do that, but I know for a fact because I've even called these companies. You can rent very very expensive GPS equipment 
and it's not that expensive. You just obviously have to know how to use it. GPS has a 10. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me say something on that real quick. Can you hear me real let quick? Let me say something on GPS. You'll be four yeah, inches ahead, off. You'll be four inches off on your on your point. On yes. End to end, like let's say five miles. How, if you how got far? a point like at point A and point B, and they're yeah. a mile apart, they could yeah. be within four inches higher or lower with GPS. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. That's, That's going to help you. Okay. Yeah. No, it will. So here's the thing about GPS, gentlemen. All right, when when you're, let's say you're just going to go camping, right? You're out in the woods, and you mark your phone with the position that you're at, right? Is it is it picking up the position you're at, or is your phone working as a beacon, and it's just telling your, you where you're your at? Your phone is a your phone is a beacon within a triangulation system of like cell phone towers. But why do they need the triangulation when the signal is your phone? Because you got to figure it's out where you're at. Where... <clears throat> I need three points to determine where you're at specifically, right? Right, Not right. Two. I see. I get you. Yeah. Well said. But wait, yeah, Cleary, okay. why is that an issue if it's four inches? I mean, let's say they do five miles, and let's say we plot that, then there's going to be some amount of variability that's not obviously a perfectly straight line. We plot it with the error bars. How does that? How, how does the curve get hidden in something if they go beyond? Uh, it's obviously not one might, mile. We're gonna. Yeah, you camps. might be all right across the five mile stretch, but you got to have some bank when you start dealing with that type of technology. That auto, uh, that total station, yeah, is like thirty thousand dollars. I mean, you could right. probably rent one, but you got to know how to use it, right? Yeah, that's the issue. So, yeah, so like finding uh, like yeah, a five you mile with the company, they they'll know how to use it. I mean, maybe that's another reason to go with an engineer. Well, then you got to pay them. I mean, you got to pay them engineers. You know what? Five grand, ten grand across five miles. I mean, shit. I don't it know might be expensive. There's a chance they already have the data. That's what I would bank on because all of I'm the assuming... data is out there. All yeah, I'm it. assuming. I'm assuming they have a five or ten mile line surveyed in their history and then the only this thing whole, that they would have yeah then they would have to do Sorry. is do the water part that maybe this they haven't country, done yet this whole country has been surveyed you can go into yeah, google exactly. and Google elevation exactly. profile it's all Cle been done clearly these guys think that they're going to start delivering drone like drones to homes and they don't think that this whole thing has been mapped out now <laughs> that's what the baller's saying no no you can't drive a drone in a straight line no no, no that's impossible really oh yeah well oh. they're just full of shit you know so of They're course it's mapped out. Society, man. The whole grid got, and all of its regulations to admit it. mapped out. I got Jim to admit that he's flat Earth society. He would not <laughs> deny it five different times. So he's halfway here. No man, they're the opposition. They're put in place to keep us from, uh, you know, moving forward. Right. Yeah. So according to him, the Earth is accelerating up into space to compensate for gravity. I don't know, man. That's that's flat Earth society. That's what yeah, kind of flat Earth society. Earth that Veritasium oh. says too. That's like uh, which is the most confusing fucking video I've ever seen. But uh, in a way, that's not that big of an issue. Let's say that's more philosophical. Does the ball fall or does the Earth come to the ball? You could. It's not. I'm not saying it's good that they say that because that's ridiculous. But that's less uh, problematic. If um, how how is a society like that so established, but they don't have a lot of rigorous tests to prove that it's flat? That's why we know that they're controlled because it's not that hard with the oh, yeah. data that yeah, we but have. They're, uh, they're parading yeah. around as globers out here in the in this arena out here. You know, I, I swear, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. You know, I mean, you think you're talking to globers, but they're just flat Earth society. Most of them. <clears throat> they got well, a lot of money. the Earth is motionless; it doesn't move. So they're trying to yeah. salvage this gravity crap. That's the thing. Things might fall from electromagnetism or other factors. So gravity's not necessary. Yeah, it's not exactly. a, a ball. Can the ball work yeah. without a spinning Earth? I don't know. Like, I'm not sure if anybody would even take a chance at <laughs> that. Hey, I only yeah, if got you a, imagine. I only got a second, guys. I only got one second, but I wanted to say something about the God. Uh, the GPS. Here's the thing. It can, it can work, but uh, assuming they're assuming the satellites are are curving you know they're assuming the ground is curving so they're going to get the reading that it's curved you feel me no they're no gonna... no 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 sir the only thing That's has right. nothing to do with how it's capturing it at all dude it does not we could set up our own sort of gps if we really were had the I, equipment but it doesn't matter it's, i do we do we believe that if you put your 
phone or whatever in a certain position that it honors that in a in a coordinate system whatever that coordinate system is because again we're using a straight line to be the reference so there's no way you can well, peek around this well, that's, well i yeah, called that's it uh, so people people are going to say that they can punch the numbers the i called it firm and they put them the in only the thing model. you could say is what clearly said that, that, that straight model. line is not perfectly straight because there'll be error tolerances that's the only wiggle room in this and that's fair but the thing is we're not going to just do one test and they can even give us multiple straight lines that are parallel yeah, they, they, can i can i them, ask you guys to put it, it in their model since, since sorry to interrupt i just said a suggestion here since the grid has already been laid out for us and since there's already data that exists between these two points wouldn't it be a, a way to falsify the ball or falsify flat earth would be to draw a core between those two points and actually have one constant let let me finish Wait, let me finish a cord on a plane you only have a cord yeah. on a ball listen listen i got it listen, i got it so listen so, there is no cord on a on a flat plane listen to what I mean, i'm saying first before cord, you're establishing you're establishing it's a presupposition a that's line. correct your presupposition is line. correct let, 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 finish, dude. let me finish dude so the point yeah, is ahead. The point is, is if they have the data between these two points, then my assumption is that the Earth is flat because I don't see any curve. There's none of it. So my idea, theory behind it would be is if the coordinates are already measured and it's already graphed out, then you would take a, a length of rope because the rope wouldn't give a shit about the distance between the two points because the rope would be the constant measurement, measuring tool, right? If the ball, the point, no, is you don't hold it up. You're just measuring from the two points. Theoretically, it would be it would be if it was a ball, then then you would uh, then you would need you wouldn't need as much rope to get to the two points, right? But if you did the two points and you had exact the amount of rope you needed between the two points, and there was not anything less, uh, 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 or am I that doing it backwards no here? That makes sense. So yeah, what what does that have to do with GPS and what we're talking about? Because because yeah, the the no coordinates sense. are. Listen, the coordinates are already picked for us. So in other words, on the maps, there's two points of, uh, of distances. That's going to have a measurement. Yeah. Okay. Because, okay. So yeah. that measurement there, my oh, idea God, is begging that. begging the question, man. That's ridiculous. No, I'm you not. I'm at. Listen, what are you dude, I'm not about begging. Data? Dude, is, is this flatter data? Yeah. Let me finish first. Let me, let me get it out because I'm I, obviously well, not understanding. I so, one. Two, my assumption Whatever. is that the Earth is flat. So, therefore, the equal distance between the two points would, if I wanted to break it down in smaller sections, I would take a 10 foot rope or 50 foot rope and I would lay it out between these two points because it would already be graphed out data wise for me. Mm -hmm. Right? So, my point is, is that you uh, wouldn't, uh, uh, you wouldn't need extra rope if it was a ball kind of thing based on those data coordinates that you already have measured out. It's so, not if the Earth. Two points, man. With like you under oh my god, dude! It's a straight line, right? So we're yeah, take you, you get it, right? So here's how you falsify the ball. The straight line. Here's how you okay. falsify the ball. You the don't need okay. between listen, between no. those two points. You listen, don't need any no. extra rope. No, it's not two points because because you're just no. measuring with the fifty foot rope between the two points that are already mapped no, out. No, we're taking multiple, data, many samples in a tight cluster. Guys. Similar to the way that the water is going to be sampled, or else it won't make sense. If you just take two points, you can fit any surface through that. Okay, so you're gonna go no, line, no, because if the thing. ball listen, if there's a ball, you're it, the the, the no distance ball. between the two points are going to be farther if it's a ball. You right, that's just a fact. That data. Know what we're no, no, that won't. You have no idea. No, go yes, ahead. No yes, it, yes, it would. Yes, it would. You have no idea. I, I'm not, already, not if you're referencing a map. No, go ahead. Listen, yeah, because the map is flat. It's two-dimensional. Exactly. So you would be able to false. No. You'd, you'd be able to prove the ball doesn't exist. That's you what, how easy it would be. You don't know what I suggested. You are more wrong. So, something else, so which is you relevant, could it's another way to prove. I'm all over you, T-Bog. I don't even see how I could hear you speak. It's another. It's, I, I, was interrupted, I was interrupted the whole entire time just getting my point across. The point is, is if the Earth is 3,959, no if the Earth is 3,959 mile, mile ball radius, then there has to be yeah, a longer distance over an arc than there is a, through a straight line. That. So, but data, so the Earth isn't that. curving, therefore you, you should be able to prove that. you should be able to prove the two points easily. There is no curve, there is no arc yeah. between those two points. So, in other words, you could calculate you could calculate. Oh my the, God, he's going to monologue. monologue. You could calculate the sag the sagitta distance, right? They're going to explain it to you in five different times. Dude, I mean, Flutter, it's we calculated it, though. Like, we did all these calculations. And, and what do you have to do? Exactly. What do you have you're to do? You're annoying yeah, exactly. your own Hold people, on. man. What did you have to do, Brandon, to calculate? I know with you. Shut up. What did you What did you do to calculate that? You had to 
presupposition. Data. Oh yeah. my god! No, my test does not involve any presupposition. Nothing. If you were no, I'm talking about Brandon's Brandon's equation. If you had one brain cell, you I'm could talking about it. Brandon's equation, not about yours. About my test. Are you proposing? Okay, so your your, your GPS, your test. your GPS doesn't give a Nobody shit about the cares. shape of the Earth. The GPS no, doesn't give a shit a shit of the shape about. of the Earth, dude. I agree. That's why we're using it. So. So the, the point that. is, you could prove that the, the radius doesn't exist because you have to have a presupposition to measure it. I can prove that nobody with. cares what you're talking about right now. Yeah, it would no be interesting to listen to Flatter Data's point one time only, like point. concisely. Only one time? All right. Everybody go mute. Let him spill it out so we can just get him. Just talking get total it over. nonsense. We actually get to a I test know. that makes sense. And then we have these retards that come through and say nothing. Uh, uh, again, you guys are trying to... You guys are trying to measure whether Earth, Earth is curved or not, right? You're talking about GPS. GPS doesn't have any preference on whether the Earth Agreed. is flat or it. round. Like you just, you just figure but, this out right but listen, now. But listen, let, let again, finish, the they're going to say, look, I know when you go look at any GPS information, the basic court, the coordinate system they use is Cartesian. Okay? We can all read that. We can all see that. That's how it's done. The argument is still between what, what they believe it's doing. They don't no, want to acknowledge. You don't, you're just stupid. Just so shut no, up. You're, you're an stop. idiot. Listen, at the end stop. of the day, stay playing coordinate systems. Grid systems are flat topography, distance and elevation you're stupid, uh, calculations. We're, we're you're an idiot. Measuring. You're an idiot. And what you're doing, what you're doing, what you're doing, again, them. again, you're wasting people's time. We're taking the maps you, are I know, all I know you don't flat. Like this it'll actually maps are all you flat. Have, There's distance and elevation in them. That's it. Nonsense about You're fucking so wasting taking, people's time talking about GPS shit because the my other side God. won't believe we're it. Taking, my God. Said, Data wasn't taking, done with his monologue. I don't care. He's an idiot. <laughs> These people are so stupid. We're Again, anybody who looks at GPS coordinates will see that they rely on Cartesian. It doesn't anybody, matter. We're taking it does matter. So, so listen, anytime... Anytime you drive your matter, car, data. it's data. 2D. It doesn't matter. Every time you drive your matter. fucking car, it's 2D. The maps are 2D. Right. Everything yeah. is 2D. It's right in front of your nuts. fucking face. And what are you trying to do? You're, you're trying dumb. to do a test to show 2D? You're essentially These a ball. That's what you're doing? Two sets of measurements and correlating them. That's it. Yeah. That's all you're, trying, you're trying to show 2D. The maps already show it's 2D. How much we're do you want to show it in front of... We're not talking about maps, dummy. We're taking two sets of measurements What are you going to use the GPS? What are you going to compare the GPS to? We're you fucking idiot. Two sets of measurements. Yeah, what are you going to compare to, you fucking idiot? You're just retarded. You what are you going to compare to, you fucking idiot? Are you, are you worried hey, that we're going to get What are you going to compare it to, you Are you worried that we're going to get to a solution so you don't have a place? Again, what the fuck are you going to compare it to, you fucking idiot? Yeah. A two-dimensional oh. map, you America, fuck. America is going to get a two-dimensional map, you idiot. How America the fuck is, is a two-dimensional like map an, made? Like an American very sweary rumpus. A two-dimensional map. Guys, this guy's a two-dimensional map. You're going to use GPS on a two-dimensional map. Are you fucking Flatter, dumb, everybody? More like Flatter, Are, is everybody or... fucking dumb here? Everybody's fucking dumb here, aren't they? You're using GPS you coordinates on a two-dimensional two map. Wake what the fuck up. I'm calling a moderator. This guy's so dumb, dude. Like, You're such an yeah, idiot, go, dude. Go You're your using rope. GPS coordinates go on a 2D map. What are you trying to prove? What the shape of the Earth is. What go are you going to try to prove? It's not the ropes, dude. It's a, it's a point of falsifying the curvature. There's Moderator. no curvature this way. Because between the two points, you don't have to have it's any fucking distance for curve. We're not talking about So again, so you, you guys are using two-dimensional maps to use GPS. Hello, you're using a two-dimensional map. It should be that obvious. Okay, so just to explain the test because you're mentally ill. And tell me if you think that this is not physically possible or like what the issue is. We're getting a surveying company to plot along a line of significant length because it can't just be like half a mile because then there's potential errors. So let's say five miles, appreciable length. Along that line, it's going to sample that line and then it's going to give us GPS points along that. Do you understand that as a first point? Do you have any issues with that? Being so or... it's using Cartesian coordinates to map out your straight line. Okay, fine. Yep. It's yeah. It's there's there's a coordinate that. So what else the fuck do you want? They're using flat flat coordinates. Okay, it doesn't matter. There's numbers that assign a, three sets of numbers to that position. Do you have do you have issues with that? Okay, so it's going to do that, and then so now we know that those numbers are reliably mapping those points along that straight line. Now we're going to use that same system to go onto a water body and then get the same measurements, but now over a two D surface. And then what we're going to do is plot both of those on the same x y z. Do you see how that will give you a unique solution? 
Okay, your your violence is proof that it will. Okay, good. I'm not listening to you, dude. I'm handling something else at the moment. Yeah, you're stupid. Go on mute. You're just, Again, you're you're, you're, doing, you're using a 2D map. Is it on map? Yeah. What? No, you're just making it sound like if as long as it's all mapped out. It's they can simple. Make it so just to clarify, it's mind simple. of God, oh you're using God. you're using a 2D map with a system that uses Cartesian systems to prove I'm a straight line, right? Using a 2D right? map or anything, I'm I'm based oh, you're on not? the fact that you can okay. take a GPS what are you using then? and map points. That's oh, it. Is okay. that, is that, yeah, is that in, in Cartesian space. Yeah, we already know that. What space it is is arbitrary. It's just taking a GPS unit and then honoring a certain point in three dimensional space and assigning it an X Y Z. You think that that's new? Like they just came up with no. that yesterday? No, they started with ground towers before they did satellites, dude. Balloon satellites. Okay, and if you plot those two shapes, yeah. do you not think that that would give us insight into what the shape of that water is? Why Again, would it not? they're using what? Cartesian you coordinates. Balloon satellites? What? what yeah. the coordinates when, in the beginning, Carlos, satellite? when they were mapping out ground, ground how, uh, how GPS, it, it's gonna be the they, would me, they would try to measure world, parallax no, between the, the balloon world, satellites world. and shit. How? Because are the, are the towers on flat ground or curved ground? You've got to pre-assume it's going to come out the same. You could say the towers are, are on cur a curved surface and get level, or you could say the... Or we Dude, can you don't even know what you were talking ground. about, Brian. Do you not understand? Do you not understand, Brian? or you do really believe what you're saying? Like, do you, do you understand the way this works, or, or do you not want a it solution? Doesn't, maybe is what's really going on. Okay, do you want these you hangouts to continue for till, till infinity? Are you talking about, to are you talking about uh, tower ground tower locations? What do you what do you mean, dude? Satellite. How much more simpler could this test be? I'm just like, asking a question, dude. Why are you well, going off well, on me, bro? Did you graduate like from grade five? Like, do you not understand? Dude, GPS again, GPS Cartesian honor systems. Points question, bro. In That's all it is. Space. Do you understand that? Do you understand that GPS can the honor whole education system is in question. They're interrupting you, man. What'd you say? Is that a big deal? Do you know that there are systems out there? I'm not even going to say the name because it'll get you uh, uncomfortable. That can map points in three-dimensional space accurately, reliably, repeatably. Do you know that, that that exists? That, okay, that so if that exists, that. okay, so if that exists, then there are also straight lines that exist in the real world. I hope you don't have any issues with that. I don't know, because you're retarded, yeah, maybe. Dude, so then if you have a straight line, then you can use that system to then go and map that straight line. And guess what? Then you could go use that system to go map water bodies. And then you correlate the two. Or plot okay, them. so mind of God, did you already hear my example, what I brought on Brandon's show about it, uh, forcing the line? Yeah, I'm yeah. So, so you you know that all the drone technology have collision infrared no, beam technology, no, that's right? That's what we're talking so about. Let me finish. Yeah, so that doesn't. I was that on. I was on Brandon's show talking about forcing the line to prove the Earth because the drones set up yeah, in a line. Yeah, monologue that time. Work. Drones monologue set up in time. a drones set up in a line, independent of is yeah. independent of the shape of the Earth, and they would connect. Via line of sight technology. What I said is the same thing. You could use a exactly. drone to make the straight line. So, you could do whatever so you want. It doesn't matter. They already know all oh, this. Oh, here shit, we go. No. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, it may, Carlos, it may you're just a retard, a man. Call. Just, just not, shut up. Yeah, dude. I'm a retard. This part, mm -hmm. I'm not disagreeing with Hang you. On. Yes, it may dude, yes. be a phone call for data that they already have. That's true. It may be. That's fine. They may not have to so, do it. So, mind of God, uh, the, the, you've, seen the, for it. you've seen the drones in China, right? The big, big displays they can do with all the patterns and everything, right? So yeah, that stuff exists. I have no the sure. line, of, line of sight technology, right? The connectivity can lock joint, like sync and lock, you know, perfectly yeah. in synchronization, right? So they have this technology. The point is, they they like the Starlink. What technology? It, if you think about how the gyro works in a in a in a, a drone, it isn't going yeah. to turn or bend over the surface of the Earth. It's going to have its yes, own rigidity yes, it in will. space. It will bend one degree so, for every 69 miles. It, it, it won't. And the yeah, point is... one degree you, for every you, 69 miles, the axis is going to be Carlos, off. It, it won't. Sit down, yes, Carlos. Yes. Monolog time. Okay, that, no, again. No, so, so listen, no, listen, Carlos. No, it does, will be. Does the beam of light... Does the beam of light... Does the beam of light... The Z axis is going to be off at one degree. Does the beam of light... two of them. Does the beam of light for line of sight technology... Line of sight technology, that beam of light, is it bending... Is it bending the one degree too? No. Nope. Yeah, yeah. So how does it maintain synchronicity if it's bending at the one degree when it's uh, uh, that distance from each other? Because via line? because it's, it's, it will have to be at sixty nine miles from each other. The and drone, the drone, one degree. and the gyro doesn't give one a degree. Shit. The drone and the gyro does not give a shit about the shape of the Earth, dude. 
Exactly. It's, they go so use gravity. That's how the mems uh, uh, again works. the gyro doesn't give a shit about gravity either. It creates yeah, its you, own. Yes, it does. It creates that's what it its. Used to, listen, that's the reference listen, for the gyro. Listen. What do listen, you think the reference for the gyro listen, is? Listen. It creates its gravity. own. Listen. How? It creates. Listen. It creates its how, own. How does the gyro work? How does a mems? Let mems me finish. Work on a Let me finish. Data, dude, who, who's your employer? It creates what do you do? your what do you own. Do? It creates What's its own job? rigidity in space. What's it's your, independent employer, of any forces right, but, acting on okay, it. That's what, what makes it what, reliable. What is it use, yeah, but what Let is the use for reference? You know where open down is. Let me finish. What is the use for reference? So it creates its own angular. Yes, but why does why does it give the reference to up and down? Based on what its rotation. It said third based body, on its I rotation. Third based on its rotation, it will create its own angular, a horizontal it path. Yes, so you need a reference. You need independent a reference for orientation. Independent. You need a reference. The reference is gravity. Okay, so the way gravity. you can. What gravity are you <laughs> yeah, talking about? Exactly. How long reference is gravity. Yeah, it's own it's there. own weight. So when you hang on, listen. So when you power on a mems a so mems uh, sensor, how does it know where up and down is? Uh, so gyro so doesn't you, care what you, your feelings are. Frames. Gyro doesn't care about your feelings, Carlos. The whole part of part, the whole point of this particular you, you instrument know, yeah, is to create its own rigidity in space. Have, so it doesn't put, care you about the shape together? of the Earth. Have you ever built one? Have you ever programmed one? About the shape of the Earth. Dude, That's why you, you go water. up over a hill, Carlos, or go down Carlos, a hill. How do you ever play with Lego? You guys are turning right? it into a shit show. I Carlos is not going to argue with the fact that straight lines can be made in three-dimensional space. Anybody with like one yeah, brain yeah, data. So who cares yeah. how they do it? Drones, whatever. Of course uh, talk about not letting me finish and get my point out. There you go. Yeah, you get a shit show, right? Things that are obvious. We have an elegant test. You can't produce anything that's better. And if you can, let's hear it. So the Starlinks uh, line up that, that way over Earth, right? They line, line of sight technology from... Yeah, uh, satellites uh, sa are real. They, they don't bend. They're just Orbits drones, are real. dude. They're just drones, dude. That's all they are. They, uh, don't get excited now. So, so how, okay? how do they stay up there? Uh, they're just drones, bud. Don't worry about it. How, how do they stay up there so long? Uh, so how long do you think they don't stay Don't worry up about there? it, Carlos. Don't worry about it. Just let him say how, whatever why do, you're going to say why, without why, challenging why do you, why do you so, get Doppler so, shift? That so let me ask you a question. Like Seventeen thousand oh, so miles Doppler. an hour. So, so let me a question. Are they yeah, not now able Doppler, to? Exactly. Are they not? Are they not able to just keep cycling the drones? Fly, no. fly fresh ones up. Replace yeah, them. Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. Keep keep miles it going. Hour? Are they not? Are they not allowed to fly at high altitude aircraft and unload them up the back of the 17, airplane? Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand miles are, are an they, hour. Are they? They can't do that. They can't 17, do that. Seventeen thousand miles an hour Doppler shift. So is that what they? That's you've done the calculations. Yeah, you've done it. Show me what you have done. I'd love to see it, Carlos. So you just made a claim. I, I, Let's see I the calculations. I don't have a whiteboard close by. Seventeen thousand five hundred uh, 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 mile per hour Doppler shift. You just said. Is that what you're saying? That was not. Yeah. That was not a claim. He answered your question. No. Yeah. The the point is, you guys are you All guys are far out. Are you're far out in your thinking, man. So how do you get how do you get that Doppler shift from from so, drones? So first of all, you don't need What's seventeen thousand. What's the drone can go? You don't need seventeen thousand five hundred now miles an hour uh, uh, drone activity to provide internet to cities below. Let's Doppler get that straight. Shift. Let me finish. Why do we get you Doppler don't. Shift? You don't Why do we need get Doppler shift? You don't need. You don't need high why do, altitude. Why do we get Doppler shift from drones, 000, from drones? That equates to seventeen thousand miles an hour. Yeah, show me that formulation. You got but. satellites orbiting the Earth. Why do you lose service? Oh, no. It's distant. Because your cell phone doesn't receive signal from a satellite. Oh, yeah, cell phone. It yeah, receives yeah. it from a, from a tower, knucklehead. We don't need crazy yeah, altitude satellites, tower, bro. Knucklehead. Exactly. None of that. Yeah. That's ground yeah, it's called cellular it's networks because of the sales of. Oh, yeah. Are you talking about satellites like satellite TV or GPS no, it's, it's or satellite waves, internet? Waves, triangulation. You're a moron. That's all it is. Yeah. You guys, hey, hey, Carlos, do you believe in terraforming? <laughs> look up, sure. look up. I think it's called you believe Loran, in terraforming. The Loran project. You believe terraforming yeah, is sure. real? Sure. Sure. Whatever you, you, you want do. To, yeah. You do. Uh, so, so is that pseudoscience or science terraforming? It's pseudoscience because we've never done it. But you believe it's it's real, right? I, I, no, I don't. I don't know if it's real. How is this relevant to oh, your okay. Doppler shift from a satellite? So the how is it uh, uh, relevant? Is because you're suspending your reality to think that you need something like a seventeen thousand five hundred Doppler shift for satellites to work. 
you're you're an no, idiot. No, you don't need it. You don't need it for it to work. So That's so why are you bringing it up? Because they're traveling at why that we, speed. Why why, why are you bringing it up? Oh, okay. So it's I'm traveling it, at that speed. I bring so it out that we, you think, we experience Doppler shit when the satellite is traveling towards you and when it's going away from you. If and I'm you asking you, you need how the heck do you achieve that Doppler shit with drones? Yeah. Are you getting the information in? No, you're not. You're just repeating some horse shit. At the end of the day, you don't need high velocity drone uh, uh, satellites to process a signal. Something way simpler, a, way more the head, velocity elegant. is irrelevant. And listen, listen. That is a byproduct how, how of much, orbit. That How speed much? is going to give you a Doppler shift. And I'm asking you, why do it we is, get is a Doppler it? shift yeah. that equates to 17,000 miles an hour from drones? How show are drones me, able to show me how you calculate that, Carlos, please. Uh, so so try try this yourself. Try to listen to a NOAA satellite. Again, show, orbit, me how, and, show, me how and, many, show me how you calculated that yourself. But what did you do? What did you use? Who did you rely on? I, re I rely on other people that have done oh, this. Oh, awesome. But I, who? I, who did you and, rely on? Data cannot answer on my, that question. On myself. Carlos, how dare on you ask it? On, on myself, I have a software-defined radio, and I'm able to tune into 137 megahertz, which is what the uh, NOAA satellites, uh, NOAA 17 or 19 or 15. Uh, yeah. Trans trans and how do you that. how do you verify that signal? Tower that's how, how do you how do you verify let the let signal where it's coming second, from? Gentlemen. By by let by let pointing the antenna to, second, to where please. it's predicted to be at, and I can I can see. Uh, that is obvious that I have a Doppler shift because the frequency changes. It's a lot higher. Oh, as okay. It's so here, here it is. So you're saying, you're saying, you're saying, going, you're saying that you're let James get in here for a second. Let, let's, let's hear what he has to yeah, say. Yeah, please. So that's all based off the towers signal, the ground based no, towers signal. Let, let me, let me, let me tell you how. Okay. So before okay. like the cell phone tell that me. I'm using, before the uh -huh. cell phone that I'm using, we had yeah, what was cellular called, network. What? Wireless cellular network. Telephone. You're not letting me talk, dude. You're talking. I'm, my bad. I'm sorry, dude. So we had wireless telephones where there was a wire connected to the home base, but you could grab the telephone without a wire and walk to other parts of your house or place of business. Yeah, okay? cordless phone. That yeah, was cordless all phone based said, yeah. off. Let me finish. That was all based off the wire to the home tower. Okay. Yeah. There's no satellite needed for that. Now the yeah. first undersea the first undersea cables that was laid was oh laid in gosh, 1852. Tomorrow. Was laid in 1852. Okay. So it's the same principle. They go to no, the tower okay. and the tower sends the signal and all the hertz <laughs> that you're talking about. Dude, how does the satellite TV work? Does it does it connect to a tower? It's the home tower. Okay, so you what are those? The what, are those what, are those, what, what about the satellite dish is pointing to? Yeah, they point what up. What angle do up. you point the satellite dish? It, it depends on when you. It depends on when you are. If you are in the southern hemisphere, you point it uh, towards the north. If you're in the northern hemisphere, you point it towards the the south. And if you're in the closer to the equator, you point it straight up. How about that? At what angle do you point it? It depends. Uh, for example, for example, over here in Alabama, it's about forty-eight degrees for Direct TV, uh, and about yeah, uh, two hundred eleven so, uh, so heading. How would you, if you was to point forty-eight degrees in front of you, using yeah. your arm, you know, what, would you be pointed mm -hmm. up a little? You wouldn't uh, be they pointed might think, straight. They up, might right? think I'm a Nazi if I point my arm more, up like more, that. But... More like the top of a tower, right? No, rather than straight I, I, up into the sky. No, I don't. I don't see a tower when oh, I okay. where the dishes Just that lie. I point. I've, I've installed about a, a thousand satellite dishes, and I've never pointed one at a tower. It's always the same elevation and uh, and and heading. So, so unless I unless I move degrees. unless I move as unless I move like you know further down south or up north, and it starts changing. So is the the forty eight degrees right that you're. You're claiming where you're at. That's where you're pointing. Where I'm at, yeah, in Alabama, Are you East Alabama. That the Forty-eight degrees is not based off of a flat level plane, and it's actually based off a curve. Yeah, it's based I mean, on the location of the degrees. It's based because it's based on based of the geocentric location or geosynchronous location of the satellite. If I move, if if well, you like go a do 90 it in ninety degree, a forty-five well, if degree, you, yeah, if your yeah, if you go, if you if level. you go to if you go to the equator, you're probably pointing straight up 90 degrees 
In fact, I can show you a picture right now if you'd like me to. Yeah, show me, show me where any satellite points, any satellite dish points 90 degrees. They're all roughly 45 degrees. All right, one second. Bear with me. I'm going to share my screen here shortly. You ready? Yeah, I, right, I seen go. that. Yeah. I've seen that evidence. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, it, I've seen that evidence. That's I don't okay. know what it means, but do I see it. How you get 90 degrees? How do you get 90 degrees? Here we go. Do you see... Do you see? Do you see? Uh, my, Is it my two screen? straight lines. Here we go. Uh, the equator. What's the reason why satellite dishes face out? But look at this. This is an equator. Look at that. Straight up. Why the heck would they point straight up if it's for uh, towers, buddy? Where Where can I look at what you're showing? Uh, I'm seeing everybody. Oh uh, my, Carlos. So okay, you got Don's profile. CB radio, right? And you're talking about pointing your satellites up. Give me a break, man. Look at that. See, they're pointing up. They're not pointing at a, at a tower. Are they pointing 90 there degrees? There we go. How about, yeah, can close you to give that. Me a, can, can you uh, draw me how somebody would no, get no, 90 no. degrees? You asked me for a photograph of them looking up. He isn't looking up. Let's look up satellite dishes in uh, Alaska. Well, I could point okay. a satellite dish up. That don't mean I'm getting a signal. <clears throat> Let's see. Just Just for the camera just for charade just for the picture carlos point all the satellites up and take a picture of them to what oh yeah just for fun Let's just see. for fun put the, the look satellites at that. pointing look at that. It's, almost, a it's almost pointing at the ground i wonder why maybe because in the very top of the uh, globe look at that how do you get 90 degrees how do you get 45 degrees it the depends on your location in the globe no your foundation is level Okay, I'm done to talking to this. No, go ahead. Okay, Boomer. Sh show me a, a picture with two curved lines at 90 degrees. We're moving away now from satellites, pointing up. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm done with this, Boomer. Yeah, you got to have two straight lines for 90 degrees. Anyway, so right, guys, I'm going to shut the stream down now. Uh, oh, okay. The uh, Discord will obviously remain open, but uh, thank you to the the panel for uh, coming in tonight and let it run uh, a little past eight. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Flat Earther well, Jose, for coming in, and uh, everyone else. Appreciate it, and we will see you back on Monday. Everybody have a good night and a good weekend. I will be back in a little while. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to the audience. We will see you on Monday. I can't close out the show that I, like I normally do because of my microphone issues, but we'll talk to everybody later. Thanks for uh, supporting the channel, those who uh, super chat in Streamlabs, and shout out to my channel members. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Peace. So we need to save the Glover. We need to save the Glover, guys. Don't be mean to them. They're really on our... Yeah. We're all on the same...